I'm at 504 traffic behind the left being an Embraer 135 to the parallel only that maintains the separation from you. 504. Okay, as the airplane's back. 057 at Clevers approach from where it's 4 left. There it is, the white right there. 504 showing traffic, call 38 miles, 3,600 descending for the parallels on our deck. Centuries ago, famed mathematician Katherine Johnson wrote, The whole idea of going into space was new and daring. There were no textbooks, so we had to write them. Now, the United Federation of Planets stands on a new brink of exploration and learning, yet again pushing beyond the bounds of contemporary understanding, and for a new dawn proclaim proudly once again, these are the voyages of
Captain's Log. The Nalumba, a Miranda-class ship, is returning from its latest excursion scouting and surveying isolated planets from the Gamma Quadrant. They are arriving from Malaya 4, which seems to have a bounty of fauna that they are excited about. Hello everyone, and welcome to the Voyages of here on the Rick and Rasp. We'll be following the story of the USS Serenitis as it continues its exploration of the Gamma Quadrant. We are using uh, Modifius's, that's the name of the game company, Modifius's Star Trek Adventures role-playing game. Uh, just as a note, we are not in any way affiliated with them, we just really love their product. And um, the way it fits in with Star Trek, we feel, is really solid. Um, so my name is Rob, and I'll be running the game here tonight, and with me we have Amber as Commander Halada. We have Sean as a Lieutenant Commander slash Dr. Keed. We have Phil as Lieutenant Commander Zeke. And then Danny as the Lieutenant Rosrin Irax. Alright, so, um... Yeah, we have the um, channel points, the Cluthulus, I believe they are called, though that is really difficult for me to say. Um, and you can spend them for, like, re-rolls and threats. You just accrue them as you watch. Uh, so, yeah, you can spend them to either help or hinder the party, whatever you prefer at this point. And then, in addition to that, for tipping, you can create NPCs that we will use in-game. Right, so as we are getting started... The uh, several members of the crew of the Nalumbo, a Miranda-class ship that is specializing in botany, has pulled up with the uh, Serenitis. Uh, they've exchanged some crewmates, and there is a bit of a to-do going down in the Dapple Doe. Mm. Cool. Cool. Hey, to-dos. <laughs> yeah. Rajan is going to go down just to make sure that, uh, you know, nobody gets too out of whack. Because he remembers the last time there was a to-do mm -hmm. in the dappled dough and people ended up fighting each other and all sorts of stuff. So <laughs> he definitely wants to keep an eye on things. Yeah, dough dues can be pretty rough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, They're so... Out um, hmm? There are outside influences that time, though. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> But are there this time? Who knows? That's what Rosrin is hoping they're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Rosrin is going down to run security. Mm -hmm. uh, Halada, where are you at? Uh, the captain has invited you to come because it is sort of a exchanging of information and, you know, celebration of the Nalumbo's recent re re success. Success. Yeah. yeah, I'll absolutely go. All right. And, uh, Keed, what's the doctor up to? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. He kind of remembers the last time, too. Um, mm -hmm. Make sure that sickbay is in ready condition, and he might be at the holodeck finishing up a training program. Okay. Because he's had a couple of rough encounters, and he wants to be in tip-top condition. Excellent. And, uh, Zeke Cooper, what are you up to? Um, Zeke's definitely um, at the party um, doing, you know, trying to maintain an air of, like, that he's there to, you know, just enjoy the party, but also mm -hmm. really just kind of, like, keeping an eye on people, you know, um, studying, not, not really studying, but, like, um, <clears throat> just keeping an eye on people he knows, um, and then also an eye on people that he doesn't know, and just um, watching, people watching. Okay. Uh, so we will open up the scene with Halada. Um, you have been talking with Captain Akel Trice, who is a Betazoid, and her first officer of the Corps, who is a Vulcan officer. So tell me about this plant you all are so excited about. I mean, there's... There's not just one, uh, this, uh, a cap the captain is speaking. The entire planet is like a verdant paradise. 
it is almost like um, jungles as far as the eye can see. Trees 50 to 80 meters at minimum. Uh, grass in, you know, pinks and greens. And we believe that uh, the pink grass can absorb and recycle pretty much any toxin that we have found. It could mean medical miracles beyond even what we have now. That's that uh, amazing, yes. Uh, her first officer kind of get, uh, chuckles and sort of uh, taps her on the shoulders. Like, she, she's very excited. Um, she is the one of the foremost botanists in Starfleet. But yes, it truly is inspiring. That's wonderful. Was, was the planet relatively peaceful then? Just full of jungle? Uh, yes. In fact, we we hadn't found any, um, any sort of, like, sentient life. There was, uh, traces of bacteria and, uh, single-cell organisms, but beyond that, pretty much just plant life. Interesting. Are we all um, there for this conversation, or is it just Halana? Well, I mean, you guys are probably you're in, you're all in the dapple dough, but this was specifically mm -hmm. between the between them. If you want to overhear and come over to speak, you're more than welcome. Yeah. Well, Rajan will say something. He'll um, he'll say, "Well, that seems interesting. If the plan has if the planet has such." verdant plant life that there's no animals of any kind yeah uh, the core continues it's in it's fascinating we are not exactly sure how the ecosystems work without the sort of herbivore to recycle dead material or the breakdown decomposition that is usually done uh, to regain nutrients into the soil but we are definitely looking into it we have a lot of samples on board mm -hmm. and he just kind of smiles and just seems they are both beaming it sounds like you've got a lot to research and that is a very interesting puzzle. <laughs> that will certainly keep everyone busy for mm -hmm. a while, from what I understand. <laughs> yes, uh, we need to, we're going to be uh, dropping information uh, back at the, the point. They're not necessarily saying this, but the point of this is to both celebrate and to drop huge amounts of data with the Serenitis, which will then be sent on to Starfleet as a whole. Are you going back into port to begin research or are you heading back out to the planet? Oh no, we're going to go back to the planet. We're um, developing some samples and seeing how things are before we set up a, a longer term camp. Hmm. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, to your discoveries, both mm -hmm. now and in the future. Yeah, they both, <laughs> they both, like, raise a toast. Yeah, Rajan just gonna keep an eye out for anyone that's celebrating a little too hard. <laughs> he may have to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, everyone is, uh, I'm trying to think of, gregarious. It is a very much, there's a lot of laughing, joking, it's a little loud, but people aren't drinking that much. Mm. At least not alcoholic or synthahol. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Everyone or just the other crew? Um, it's a lot of the other crew, but it's pretty infectious. They're just... You know when you find those people that are just really excited about something, even though you know 
have no clue what they're talking about, but it makes you excited to listen to them. That's sort of what's going on here. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, and I, I will happily just keep listening to them enthuse about it unless something comes up mm -hmm. that I need to, like, be paranoid about. <laughs> All right. That's okay. Roswin can be paranoid for everybody. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Zeke, are you still just sort of watching yeah, just, around the periphery? Just Yeah, people watching. You know, if anybody comes and engages me in conversation, I mm -hmm. happily reciprocate, um, but I'm not seeking out conversation either. Just... Good thing. Um, Someone I'm gonna have... he often does, like, just when he's in, you know, the mess hall or whatever, he just stakes out a spot, and people usually come to <laughs> him. Yeah. yeah. Rosalind's gonna actually, like, call Dr. Haskins, and, uh, he's gonna say, Doctor, um, just so you know, the, uh, the ship that just docked, the botanists, they have some, claim they have some very interesting healing properties on these plants that they've, uh, that they found. I don't know if that would interest you, but you might want to talk to them before they leave. Did they bring any samples over with them? Yes, pretty sure they did. Uh, they did not bring any to your ship, no. Oh, okay, they're on their ship. Yep. Oh, okay. They have them on their ship. Yeah, if, if we do by chance bring any of those samples over, let's make sure that everything, force fields, scans, everything is done with due diligence. We do not want another incident. <laughs> Understood. But Understood. yeah, um, I'm almost done with the training program. I, I'll be down there in about 10 minutes. Okay. Haskins out. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Zeke, I need, uh, would you give me a an insight plus security role, please? Um, is there a difficulty? Is oh, going to be a range of... we're just going to say a difficulty of one. Oh, okay. Alright. Uh, two successes. Um... Excellent. Um, you see a crewman that you don't recognize, and he is wearing the, um, the shipboard uniform, kind of like the TNG uniform, so you're pretty sure he's from the Nalumbo. And he isn't looking exactly as cheerful as everyone else from the crew is. Um, so I would give that person a little bit of space, but if, you know, after like five minutes, you know, nothing has really changed, I'd probably mm -hmm. um, approach. Yeah, he is sort of, uh, he's a human, and he's sort of, he's at the bar, and he's sort of kind of on the periphery of a group, but not really part of the group. Okay. So uh, that will add one momentum to the pool, unless you're looking for some more information. Um, I will take some more um, information, and I do have um, a great or talent that says that um, whenever I spend one or more momentum to obtain information, I may ask an additional question. Excellent. Um, uh, okay, so that's uh, spending that momentum. So... Uh, what, do you have specific questions you'd like? Um, yes. Um, what, um, <clears throat> is their rank? And, um, did you mention what color, uh, uniform? So what division? Oh, no. Um, he has a blue uniform, pretty much everyone, except for the, uh, captain and the first officer are in blue and yellow so they're all either science or there's a handful of ops people okay. and then of course the two ranking officers are in red command red and he is a um ensign one pip or cadet i think is one pip okay so low ranking officer I don't know if that's two or one since I asked. For oh, that color. that would be one because you're just sort of examining his okay. uniform. Okay. Um, the other piece um would actually be like uh, a little bit about the group that he's kind of attached to, but not really. Um, what are they? What's? I'm assuming their demeanor is kind of the same as everyone else's. So you know, yeah. Is there any 
particular discussion that's going on in that group that's different than the other discussions that are going on around the room? Uh, no, it's pretty much the same group. We'll say he, there's basically three or four other officers around, uh, pretty much, again, blue shirts, uh, about and the mostly, same rank. And mostly his crew, or our... Oh, his crew, yes. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. And, um, they are... One thing you do notice is there are... One is a, what you would assume, a half Vulcan, half human, and two, um... What appear to be a uh, half beta zoid people. Okay. Um, so I think that I would approach him um, and, you know. Hi, I, I'm Zeke. Y you are. Oh, um, uh, my my name is Jace. Jace, nice nice to meet you. Is this your first time on the Serenitis? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's actually my my first time on any ship but the Nalumbo. Oh. Um, fresh out of the academy, then? Yeah, yeah, it's actually, uh, our first, uh, first tour of duty for a lot of us. Oh, wow, right into the Delta Quadrant, you know? How are you enjoying that? Oh, um, it's really good. It's been, um, the last, uh, this is our third or fourth planet, it's hard to keep track. Most of them have sort of, um, been like, um, mud balls. Not a whole lot going on, studying some, some microorganisms or, or the like, but um, this this is the first one that has been a, a planet, yeah. Oh, all right. That's awesome. Um, so I think I would probably know whether their ship has a, a counselor or not. Um, yes, and we have a momentum uh, bot for us by, um, uh, Matt, who, uh, is, plays Tox Garahar on this ship, and normally is running. <laughs> um, it's a Miranda-class ship, which has a, sort of a maximum crew of, like, 36. So there's, uh, probably a couple, like, there might be, a like, a psychiatric nurse... Like, one of their um, nurse or medical might have some training in psychology, but probably not a counselor. Okay. Um, so then I'd, you know, say to, to Ensign Jace, um, so, um, here on the, on the Serenitis, I kind of serve a, a dual function. Um, one is kind of as a, a diplomat and an ambassador. Um, the other is as a counselor. Um, what's, what's your role on the... Nalumbo. Oh, um, I'm a, um, I'm a deputy researcher. Yeah. Um, my job is basically to sort of step and fetch for the, for the higher ranking people to, you know, make sure that they have the, to, to calibrate scientific instruments before they use them to, um, look over data and make sure there's no glaring errors before I pass it on to... Not too like the captain. Sometimes it can feel like you're putting in your dues and, you know, not necessarily doing what it is that you really want to do, but um, my recommendation to you, get out of it what you can. You know, there's something to learn there. Uh, can I go ahead and have you roll a reason medicine? Uh, yeah. Or pres presence medicine. Presence, Presence works better. Right. Target? Uh, it's a target of two. He's a little antsy. Alright, I've got a 15, but I guess we've had some momentum buys. Yeah, I think we have probably, f I think we have about five momentum right now. Alright, um, so if the party's okay, I'll, I'll take one of those. Okay. Uh, we apparently have six momentum. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, please. Yeah, let's get that down away from <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I have three successes, so we'll just go ahead and put that right back. Or maybe I'll ask for information. Yes. Um, he kind of like. Well, there's. I guess I just feel kind of like I might have made a mistake. Because um, the first day we, a lot of us junior researchers, beamed down and. With a couple of the higher ups, and it was amazing. It was one of the best experiences of my life. 
but then I I went down once later in the week, but for pretty much the entire month long excursion, that that was it. I was only planet side maybe three times, so I'm just no one said anything. No one's I've not been reprimanded or brought up on anything. No, no one's even sort of like, hey, you uh, might want to be more respectful to the commanding officer or anything like that. They just they just passed me over for the planet side missions. I am genuinely sorry to hear that. It sounds like that was something that you enjoyed. Yeah, you, I mean, you had that opportunity. I I got into Starfleet to explore, to experience new worlds, and well, it doesn't get any new world than this. It's a planet with no sentient or sapient life. We may be the first intelligent creatures on that planet. Have you taken an opportunity to speak with um, the superior officer about the situation? Uh, I haven't, no. I'm I'm worried that if uh, if I start poking around or pressuring, it might it might make me look worse than than I already do. Well, you don't even know that you look bad yet. You're making I, assumptions. I can't imagine why else. Almost everyone aboard the ship got you know many missions, twelve, thirteen planet side missions. Well, you're still still making an assumption. Yeah, just, just me and Roscoe, and he won't talk about it. Is Roscoe here at the party? Um, no, he decided to stay back on the Nalumbo. Well, I'm glad that you came out. You're still exploring, even if it's on a ship. <laughs> you haven't met all these people. Um, yeah. So, um, well, I want you... To speak for you. Um, and I'm going to encourage you to do that. Um, and if there's things that I can do to help you, you know, I'm a counselor and that's not limited to this ship. You know, I'm a calm call away. He looks pretty relieved and thanks you. you know, try to make the most of the night, you know, mm -hmm. have some fun. Um, and, you know, I'm going to go mingle. Um, but, you know, you want to catch up with me later, please do. Thank you. So, yeah, the uh, night continues. Well, as much night as you get in a star starship. <laughs> but, um, yeah, everyone seems pretty happy and jovial. Um, uh, Keed, would you like to show up at some point? Yeah, yeah, after, after uh, Rosman called me. Um, I finished yep. up my program, got cleaned up, showed up all, you know, freshly mm -hmm. polished and ready to mingle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so definitely we'll order a drink. Um, I'll scan the room for Rosrin so that he can make introductions for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rosrin's been wandering around, uh, you know, doing security along the periphery of the edge of the room. All right. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, when Keed comes up to him, he'll take him over to the captain and the first officer and say, uh, Captain, uh, Commander, this is Dr. Keed Haskins, our chief medical officer. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, uh, the captain and the first officer are both very friendly, very open, extending hands to shake. Definitely will. Shake hands. Uh, so, uh, Lieutenant Rosrin told me that you guys have encountered a new planet full of plants. Yes, it's fascinating. Have you, how much research have you done? Have you found any new medicinal applications or anything that looks promising yet? Uh, we took a, a month survey of the planet. Um, we found some plants that we believe the filtering qualities could really improve um, sort of poison control 
and possibly even prevent certain diseases. Interesting. I mean, you know, there are still quite a few diseases that we haven't been able to, you know, stomp mm -hmm. out. Um, oh, shoot, I was trying to remember one specifically from Star Trek, but I can't remember it now. Uh, <laughs> so, do you have any of these samples with you? Oh, no, no. Uh, they are currently on the ship for um, quarantine protocol. Good. We've had a few brushes with those recently over here, so mm -hmm. due diligence is definitely needed when it comes to some of the stuff that we're finding in the Gamma Quadrant. We are trying our best to adhere to Starfleet protocol. This is the captain speaking, Captain Akil, the Betazoid. We are trying our best to... Um, attain to Starfleet's um, protocols on that, but it is just very exciting, but we have been mostly successful in that. Has your doctor been keeping up with the away teams and making sure that they're not coming back contaminated or yep. any... any yep. um... Oh, shoot. You're... Mm -hmm. Long day at work, now I'm drawing blanks. <laughs> any anomalies in their scans that have been noted? Nope. Uh, we phase buffered them through the um, uh, beamer thingy. Isenberg compensator. <laughs> yes. Um, I forget the teleporter. Yeah. There is a term for it. The energizer pad, and then we also do the old-fashioned um, uh, jelly disinfectant planet side. Oh, before and after entering you guys are definitely being diligent then if you're using the old-fashioned jelly for decontamination <laughs> and but we I'm... have our um inner as a i have can anyone remember what that is called because that's really bothering me my apologies on the transporter the transporter beam yes yeah. i was just thinking the entire transporter we have that recalibrate um we have our chief of engineer recalibrate that uh every time before or after we beam people well have you have you noticed any odd bacteria hitching a ride back up when you're doing when you're transporting because i would be interested in looking at you know strange little bacteria that you know the the phase buffers catchers catch um cindy we can share that data with you as part of the uh, packet great i can't wait to dig into it i mean mm -hmm. at the academy i studied botany and alien botany as possibilities for field healing you know excellent um he is not aboard right now but our uh chief engineer roscoe may have uh lieutenant commander roscoe <laughs> may have some information about that he is our chief of engineering but everyone aboard the nalumbo does have uh, pretty strict scientific training I was gonna say on a ship that small, you guys must be, you know, specialized. You know, more than one specialization is definitely being needed for each crew member. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as a um, out of character, as a scientist, scientific research vessel, everyone on board is sort of uh, a dual major at Fleet Academy between sciences and something else, or oftentimes two different sciences because they're overachievers. <laughs> Well, Captain Commander, I will let you get back to your evening. I look forward to seeing more of the data when it comes when it comes across. Um, I'll look at Rosarin. Thank you for the introductions, Lieutenant. And I'm going to sit down at a table and enjoy my drink and just you know watch what's going on in the room. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Rosarin will uh, you know nod at the Captain and Commander and then continue his rounds around the room. Mm -hmm. You know, making sure everybody. You know, is leaving safely, or you know, yep. all of that. Yep. Uh, the crew of, of the um, the Lumbo are actually going to be staying. There's about sixteen of them. It's not the whole crew. It's just a detachment of it, and they're actually going to be staying on board overnight hmm. to help. Um, there's a lot of data to transfer and. Just sort of kind of an R and R. They're gonna rotate people in because their ship doesn't have things like a hollow deck or a decent cafeteria. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or uh, good showers, I'll say. They have pretty bad ones on there. 
<laughs> the uh, the Miranda class ship are an older class of ship. Yeah, that sonic shower only goes at one frequency on the Miranda class. Yeah, <laughs> and it always kind of rattles. <laughs> it's oddly humid, which is weird because it's a sonic shower. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the evening progresses, um, and we'll say that it pretty much ends. I mean, people are slowly filtering out over the course of the night. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can go ahead and call that uh, night over. Um, mm -hmm. I uh, Keed, Rosrin, and Halada, can you make me an insight plus, uh, I think I'm going to go with command. What's the difficulty? Uh, we'll say for Rosrin and Halada, because you had a lot more interaction, it'll be a one. For Keed, it'll be a two. Okay. Oh, good. One success. I got two successes. Uh, I got oh, wait. Two successes. Tie, is, tie is four, right? What? If, if it's a tie, like if it is... My, yes, if you hit the number, number... Yeah, if you hit the number, then it is a success. Okay, then I got two. Because I right. had 13 and I rolled the 13, so... Um, you're not sure what it is, but when you're laying in bed, you're kind of going over the events of the evening. Um, you encountered a Vulcan who was laughing and throwing back drinks and hugging and shaking hands. Mm -hmm. The first officer of a corps is a Vulcan. And as you're thinking about it, there were a number of Vulcans in the crew, and they all seem to be partying it up a little not like again not like doing shots in the back of a, <laughs> a buffalo wild wings partying not 3 a.m denny's parking lot partying but just you know <laughs> che very cheerfully chattering and almost gossiping it's a very very out of character mm -hmm. yeah odd very odd yeah well, Roger will nice. definitely make a note to keep an eye on the, the Vulcans over mm -hmm. that ship while they're here. Yeah. And uh, Rosrin, as chief of security, and Halad, well, actually, I believe all of you, because of your positions, do have access to the Nolumbo's um, registry, so you can figure out exactly who's on board and all of that, if you want to do any research on the crew. Yeah. It, Maybe I, see if it's... I will send a message kind of before I go to bed or whatever to Halada, you know, kind of mean like, um, hey, I had a sh short chat with an Ensign Jace from the Nalumbo. Um, w w uh, I, I think you said it was a he? Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, he um, <clears throat> wasn't, you know, too happy with the amount of... Um, trips to the planet he got, I guess, relative to some of the other officers. You know, I kind of told him to advocate for himself, but um, just in case that is a problem, and maybe you want to have a little, you know, side-to-side one-to-one with the other first officer about, you know, an issue on with the crew on their ship, you know. Nothing official or formal or anything like that. Mm. So yeah, that'll kind of be in inbox or something. <laughs> yeah. I, I was probably going to hop on and be like, uh, hey, Dr. Haskins. Commander, uh, yes? They are... Did you happen to notice that there were a whole lot of Vulcans who were not as uh, uptight as normal? Well, I mean, you know, this, the bar for uptightness with a Vulcan is set pretty high, so I mean, how... I believe what? that they were hugging people and laughing and... Well, beaming. Uh, <laughs> How many? All of them that I saw. Well, I mean, if it was one, I mean, it could be um, Bendai syndrome. It was mm. not just one. Yeah, that, that I mean, all of them having that, that's, 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 that's definitely out of the norm. I, I mean, I didn't really notice anything. I was too busy talking to the captain and the commander of the other ship about their research. Um, that is concerning, though. And it's at this time Keed remembers that the first officer is a Vulcan that, you know, was one of the ones who was really excited. Oh, wow. I guess 
you know, when I was talking to the first officer, I didn't think about it at the time. I guess I was too preoccupied, but he was a little overzealous for a Vulcan. Yeah. So if you could maybe check their records against old old data on them or something, see if you can get a couple in for a med scan. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm a little concerned. Yeah, uh, I can see if they've, you know, how, how to date they are for their annual physical and maybe offer our ship as the platform to do that since they're already over here enjoying some R&R. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan. All right, I'll get to work on that. And I'll send a message to um, Zeke thanking for the heads up on the Ensign and see if there's anything Mm -hmm. I can do to figure out what might have gone on there. Okay. Like, I don't know how open everybody's records are. So. Uh, you are a commander, and you're the commanding officer of the ship. You have access to their records. And being if, chief medical officer, I would have access to their medical records then, too, as well. Yeah, their medical records, yes. Yep. But Halada has access to probably everything but their medical records. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm pretending space HIPAA, SHIPA <laughs> is a thing. As it should be. <laughs> yes. I am uh, very pro HIPAA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'll go ahead and see like if they, if there was something like unofficial disciplinary or something in his file. Nope. Huh. Um, but as you're looking, uh, go ahead and make me a insight command as you're going through their mission logs. Okay. Is there a difficulty? Uh, we'll just say it's a difficulty of one. You're just sort of getting the lay of the thing. I got one success. All right. Um, you notice that pretty much everyone has multiple, um, like, again, even like a lot of the engineers went down to the planet like six to eight times. The only people that didn't were uh, Cadet um, Cadet Jace and Lieutenant Commander Roscoe. Do their logs indicate anything about how they pulled duty rosters? Uh, no. Okay. Um, would you like to spend a momentum of your capped momentum pool for more information? Yes, please. <laughs> all right. As you are, uh, do you have any questions, first of all? Not specifically, just like, is there anything else we should know? The, the good plot hook question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as you're going through, something strikes you. The, um, not only were Jace and Roscoe the only two not to spend a significant amount of time planet side, they're both the only humans aboard the ship. Uh, oh. Huh. Okay. The, the ship is primarily a Betazoid ship, uh, both, uh, primarily full-blooded, but there are some human-Betazoid hybrids. There is also a contingent of Vulcan officers that you have met, and there are a few Napian officers, and one uh, Helanian officer as well. Hmm. So I'm going to, I mean, it's late. I'm going to sit on it tonight. I'll talk hmm? to the, the XO tomorrow and see if I can finagle around to... Hey, how come the humans got left out <laughs> without putting it that way? <laughs> <laughs> so when when Keed is going through their files, would I know it was Nap the only ones that are not familiar with it, Napians, what was the other the other race? Napians and Halanians. Are they telepathic in any any stretch? Any They are in fact. Okay. Uh, Napians, well, their Napians aren't telepathic. They're contact empathic. Okay, but they have some kind of yeah, yeah. And then um, Halanians, uh, they're not much known about them. If you want to give me a reason medical role, we'll say it's a difficulty of two. I think I would know this if I know it. I'm, yeah. Um. <laughs> uh... That is two successes. Two successes. Excellent. Yeah. They are, they're not a Federation species. There are very few of them within the Fed, within Starfleet. 
they have not only psychic abilities, but they can create projections. They can create psychic projections, usually um, not on purpose. Okay. Cool. Well, that's a lot. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Love the jump in logic there. <laughs> uh, Roger knows he needs a good night's sleep, so he remembers this about the Vulcans, but he's going to make a note to check into it in the morning and see what he has as far as security and records go in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I'll start whatever process trying to get some of the Vulcans and probably the two humans over for uh, a physical. Mm-hmm. All right, just so, went to bed. <laughs> yeah, uh, we will call it a night. Uh, that means we're changing scenes, so we do lose a momentum for that, which I believe puts us at four momentum. And so, yeah, we will wake up the next morning. Um, people are like making their way down, either onto shift or grabbing breakfast. Cool. Rajan gets up, has a brush shower. <laughs> has a cup of coffee and a look around all right breakfast. uh is there anything specific that rosrin is looking for yeah he's gonna go to his office and he's gonna look up the crew of the the limbo Lim nalumbo 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 mm -hmm. the nalumbo and he's specifically looking for you know because he probably has access to any security incidences that they might have had or mm -hmm. um you know any indicator if there is anyone on the ship that might have had run-ins with security or All right. um attitude problems or anything like that because if you can get an idea of perhaps you know or even i mean this would be more counselor but you know even like personality profiles he's trying to glean yeah. like if this is the normal state of <laughs> affairs for them or if they were like like this after the planet like yeah you know is this just normal state for them if so that's not as concerning but if it's not then yeah you're trying to wrong. you're trying to do crime profiling stuff yes exactly yeah all right uh give me an insight security sweet two successes ten is a uh, it was going to be a difficulty one. My apologies. Um, That's all right. <laughs> so yeah, you're looking through their documents. This crew was actually only taken on a few missions ago. Um, the Nalumbo is an older ship. It had just come out of dry dock for repairs. Uh, nothing significant or serious. I uh, got a little dinged up because, you know, during the Dominion War, literally every ship was in combat. Mm -hmm. um, but it's... So yeah, it was given a new captain, new crew, and it everything seems to be good. There are a couple of security reports, you know, beta a couple of betazoids got into a fist fight at one point. You know, they are well, they're a very emotional species, mm -hmm. but nothing mm -hmm. that you would classify out of the ordinary. Okay, there's no like, no murders, no. Okay. Uh, no Vulcans getting changes. into fist fights. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's no Vulcans getting into fist fights. No, yeah, okay. All right. Um, Roger's going to call Commander Hilata uh, on the comm. And he's going to say, Commander Hilata, I don't know if anyone else has brought to your attention or if you also noticed, but the, uh, the Vulcans from the uh, Nolimbo crew we're acting differently than I would expect Vulcans to act. I tried looking in their records, but uh, I can't really find any, from the access that I have, I can't find anything unusual either. But I thought you should know, um, especially when we're dealing with strange plants. <laughs> if you recall, I had some interesting, uh, interesting encounters with strange plants and things in the past, so I'm a little leery of uh, strange plants being nearby. Completely understandable. 
yes, other other people have noticed it's been brought to our attention. Thank you very much for following up on it. Uh, the doctor is looking into <clears throat> whether or not he can get a few in for a physical to see what is going on. Excellent. If there's anything I can do, please let me know. Absolutely. Try just to keep an eye on them. I don't think them being cheerful is cause for, like, <laughs> alarm. <laughs> yeah. But, but con concern, sure. But mm -hmm. I don't think we need to, like, have them under constant watch or anything like that. But keep an eye out. Make sure, jolly love. Turn... <laughs> <laughs> Make sure things don't take a turn for the worse. I will do so. Thank you, Commander. Thank you. And then uh, Rosman will tell his uh, security officers. Um, he's not going to phrase it like keep an eye on them because, uh, you know, I mean, they're young, especially Minkler. Like he doesn't trust <laughs> Minkler not to like frick it up and be creepy in the hallways or something like that, you know, just, you know, or some crap. So He's, he's, in, a full, he's in a full ghillie suit on board. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, so, but the, sad, the sad thing is when you pass by that ghillie suit you hear don't be suspicious, don't be suspicious. <laughs> he's, doing, he's doing that cronk from emperor's new groove like dun, 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 dun. <laughs> um so rajman is just basically going to tell his security officers he's going to say as you're well aware we have guests on board the ship um be uh, available for anything that they should need you know, any of that sort of stuff, you know, pay attention to see if, if they might need your assistance of, of any kind. And do let me know if, if there is something that they need. So yeah, they are going to be on sort of alert. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so let's go with um, Zeke. What is Zeke up to this morning? Maybe Zeke's day off. Yeah? Sure. All right. Um, so Zeke's going to be up uh, bright and early. For some reason, I just had a flash of, like, Zeke's day off, like, baby's day off. <laughs> or baby's day out, not off. My apologies. <laughs> not as comedic as that. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> um, so he'll get up um, and he'll go... Um, to, to work out in whatever facilities um, they are before cleaning up and heading to a leisurely breakfast um, in the dough. Um, as you arrive there, there are several, you know, members of the Nalumbo crew uh, scattered across various tables, just sort of eating, chatting, making plans of what to do for the day. Um, is uh, Cadet Chase there? Um, go ahead and roll me a d6. One. One, he is not there, no. Okay. Um, do I see a lieutenant commander in a yellow shirt from the Nalumbo? Um, you do not, no. Okay. Um, I'll probably just get a table by myself. Um, but it'll probably be like a four top. So, you know, kind mm -hmm. of making it open if anyone else wants to, to sit, but I'm not yeah. sit with anyone. All right. So you're just going to sort of munch away at your breakfast? Yeah. All right. And uh, what is Keed going to be up to? He is working on a hypothesis on what's going on possibly okay. and is really trying to get in some of the crew from Lenumbo for some tests. Sure thing. So All right. I'm going to put a request into their captain offering our ship as, you know, it's time for everybody's annual checkup. So, you know, we've got the large facility, state of the art, blah, 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 you know, not to yeah, disparage their sick bay, but you know, it also doesn't seem out of the ordinary that, like, if they've been on a planet that hasn't been done for, you know, looked at for a month, and they're the first people on there, that a physical would kind of be, like, make sense just to make sure that, you know, with better facilities than they probably have aboard their ship, being so small. Yep. 
uh, we will say the first person who arrives for that is actually going to be the chief medical officer of the Nalumbo, who is Dr. Tipplenir, or Tipple for short. Tipple. Yeah. He is a Nepean. And uh, for people that aren't familiar, they are pretty much human, except for, I believe, they are bald, and they have sort of like a leaf-like growth on their head, forehead, almost like a Cardassian, and then some, like, modeling along their face. Okay. Uh, is, is it morning, mid-morning? Yeah, we'll say it's... Time? You've gotten up, you had your coffee, or your blood coffee, because you're a Klingon, apparently. <laughs> um, half coffee, so it's... A, or half Klingon, so it's coffee, little cream, little blood yeah. wine. Coffee with a side of honor and victory. It's, <laughs> it's Klingon coffee, which is kind of like Irish coffee, but with yeah. live worms in it. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll just go for a nice rack to Gino. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, he uh, shows up. Good. Oh, good morning, uh, Dr. Tipple. Yes, yes. You know, I, I hope you don't take offense, but we figured we would just offer the ship medical facilities. You know, I know medical the medical bay on a uh, Miranda class is a little cramped yeah oh definitely and um we are not built for um medicine no I mean you know and with your with your ships build out you know it's not like you're you know out there defending other ships or you know mm -hmm. have a, a large need for sick bay like this mm-hmm um, this, so this is just going to be routine, though we do have a new thing that I would like to try. Um, I would like to, to apply a cortical scanner to okay. see if we can see anything neurologically as well as your physical to make sure you're just in tip-top health. That sounds excellent, yes. So I will go ahead and have you make a... Um, it's definitely going to be a medicine roll. Do you think this would be an insight or a reason? Uh, I don't know. Reason seems like it's, like, I know what I'm looking for. This is more, I think, insight. Yeah. You're kind of playing by feel. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, so what am I shooting for? Difficult. Uh, we'll say it is a difficulty three because this is not a common species. And this is not necessarily a common scan. So you can get the scan just fine, but it's more reading the results to figure out, is this normal for this species, also okay. for this specific person, for his age, his... Okay. Do um, you guys mind if I use a momentum for an extra dice on this? Go for it. Yeah, go for it. Mm -hmm. All right, so that is... Uh, I got three. Barely, but I got three. Excellent. All right, and you are currently at three momentum as well. So you are noticing some anomalies. You're not entirely sure that those are dangerous or bad, but there is there is something going on. I'm just, you know, I'll put on a pleasant smile, and I'm like, you know what? Everything looks great. You know, for being on such a small ship, you guys are keeping in great physical condition. Um, I'm not seeing anything weird on these scans at all. So, you know, I hope you enjoy your time here on the Serenitis. Make sure that you hit the the holodeck. Uh, there's some great programs in there. Excellent. If yeah, you, it sounds great. If you want, uh, Commander Sharin and I have some physical fitness things. <laughs> they're a little bloody sometimes, but they're they'll they'll, they'll get your heart pumping. <laughs> Well, well, we'll look into it, yeah. Mm -hmm. He doesn't seem exactly enthused, but... <laughs> he does come from the nerd ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, maybe a little bit of small talk, but yeah, I think we're done for right now until I can get maybe a Vulcan in here for a scan. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, let's pop over to Halada real quick, and we'll come back and uh, run you through with a Vulcan. So, Halada, after your call with Rosrin, what are you up to for the day? I'm going to see if I can get the commanding officer from the, uh, the exo from the other ship to come, like, on a hike in the holodeck with me, or if they want to play yeah. 
a board game or something so that we can like mm-hmm. so that I can try and figure out what the heck is going on. You can play Spring Ball, I believe is the name of it. Sure. No, oh, go for Parisi Squares. Yes, yeah, like Parisi Squares. <laughs> that might be a little violent for this early in the morning. <laughs> I don't know. You can wake up and choose violence, right? Yeah. Yes. I just love the uh, the American Gladiators esque uh, set for the Spring Ball games in DS Nine. <laughs> So yeah, you're going to go ahead and invite him over as sort of one XO to another. Yeah. And yeah, he he'll agree to it. So they show up at the holodeck. Like, I'm glad you invited me. We don't have uh, really room for these on the on the Miranda class ships. Ah uh, no, all all everything's taken up for research, from what I understand on those. Hmm. Yeah, it's basically a bridge in labs. <laughs> it sounds about right. Uh, yeah, when you've got, you know, whole families and stuff, things get a little bit crazier. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is a this is a fun program. Let's let's go. Let's go. Uh, wake up. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, you want to run? Roll me a uh, either a control or daring. No, I think it would be fitness plus security. There's no difficulty. It's just sort of to see how you do. Sure. And I, I will got... roll one for his as well. I got two successes. Excellent. Uh, he got one. So yeah, you are... You guys are, you know, doing your thing. So go ahead. Um... Yeah, so as you guys are playing or hiking or kayaking, maybe... <laughs> uh so how do you all pick on like who's going to come down to a pl- planet side when you do mission logs uh usually that is the uh i'm gonna have you roll me um presence plus command because are you well are you trying to ask in like a subtle way like bringing the conversation around to it or are you just going, hey, how do you do this thing? <laughs> no, I... Amber, the player, is very tired. Yeah. And Halata, Halata would be trying to, like... Yeah. This would be working around to it in another conversation. Yeah, it'd be like, you know, um, talking about commanding officer things. You know, like, yeah, one of my jobs is assigning duty rosters to the bridge crews. Uh, do you do anything like that? Yeah. yeah. So I will have you roll, yeah, the in or the presence command. All right. Yeah. She could also be like, oh, on a science ship, people must be begging to go planet side. How do you decide <laughs> who gets to go? <laughs> yeah. So that's that's two successes. Two and successes. If disarming nature applies, then the difficulty is lowered by one. Um, which does that? That's my Cation. Tra- talent mm-hmm. where if there's if it's too if it's a social challenge to make a target like or trust me the difficulty is reduced by one yeah we can say that so that'll actually would have been a difficulty of zero because it was going to be only be one i really need to remember to state that before the rolls <laughs> so that'll be two momentum into the pool and um the core answers well it depends on the mission really um a lot of the time, um, Dr. Flo, um, Dr. Floch will do that. Decide who goes on the missions. Or one of her um, subordinates. Dr. Floch is your head of science? Uh, yeah, she's our chief um, researcher. So did you did you enjoy your time planet side? How many missions did you get to go down on? Oh, um, I went down on um, about half of them. Me and the captain sort of traded off. Sure, that makes sense. Gotta gotta keep somebody on the ship. Make sure it goes. Oh yeah. Running. Make, make sure it doesn't disappear, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's only happened a couple times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, is saying that as a joke. I know. I'm teased. I'm... Well, no, no. Again, Vulcan. <laughs> He's joking. Telling a joke. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm getting it. I just um 
I am trying to think if there is any way to subtly ask why he is so relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I'm not sure there is, but I'm sure going to try. <laughs> All right. Um, what do you think, what kind of a role do you think that would be? And do you have a way that you are moving around to it? Or do you, or when he says that and laughs, you just go, hey, I noticed that uh, you're a Vulcan and... Um... <laughs> I don't, I don't want to call it out quite that bluntly. Mm -hmm. um, kind of like, with all the time you got Planet Side, you seem to be a lot more relaxed than I'm used to Vulcans being. Is it just that the planet was so beautiful? Um, I guess I hadn't noticed. Um, we pretty much, the ship um, with the captain and most of the crew being Betazoid, I guess it just sort of rubs off on you after a while. Just sort of a love for life and a joy and experience sounds very very nice <laughs> well it is yes i suppose it might be a little hard to reintegrate into vulcan culture after this but um yeah it's just it's, uh, no mission, no mission mm -hmm. comes without challenges <laughs> yes um so yeah he, he just this is something that happened so gradually he wasn't even aware he was doing it that seems, um, that seems legit. All right. If you want, you can make an insight. Um, we'll say insight security. Okay. Sort of as like a sense motive role to get a read on him. Again, it's going to be like a difficulty of three because you're not really sure how to deal with a giggling a Vulcan. Yeah. Um, that makes Again, sense. Again, and they're not really giggling. It's just sort of a a chill Vulcan. Yeah. Um, I'd like to buy a die then. Mm-hmm. And... So spending a momentum to buy a die. Yeah. But that is still only one success. All right, so... yeah. As far as you can tell, he's being really upfront with you. Okay. Even though he is more relaxed and calm it seems like he is retaining the vulcan sort of no nonsense not hiding anything behind yeah very straightforward yeah cool a very blunt individual <laughs> so yeah finish whatever program hang out yeah to make sure that he feels welcome here all that good stuff and hope that the doctor gets more answers than i did <laughs> yep and he's like, you know, if you, yeah. Uh, so I hope we can do this again before um, our R and R is over. I would really like that. I always love spending time in the holodeck doing some of the sports in it. So. Uh, all right. So we will cut back to uh, Doctor Keed Haskins. I'm just. Yep. Trying to correlate data. Yep. Um, we will say that a Vulcan junior officer, or yeah, Vulcan junior officer shows up for his scans. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing. Good afternoon. Um, I hope you don't mind the intrusion on your R and R, but you know this should be really quick. We're just doing, you know, physicals to make sure that you know everybody on the the new Lumbo the the, 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 the Lumbo is. Mm -hmm doing fine oh yes that's a perfectly logical response we have been planet side for over a month now well yeah and on a ship that small you know you don't have the holodecks for all the physical fitness that you might want to do or you know it can you know make you a little stir crazy being in a ship that small sometimes mm -hmm. uh as we're talking i'm going to try to i don't know if there's a role for this in this game make a couple of jokes to see if i can get a chuckle out of the Vulcan? Um, I would say that, we'll say a daring plus command. <laughs> Alright. That, that strikes me as very a, a very much a Riker role. 
right. Uh, what are we shooting for here on the... Um, we'll say it's only a difficulty of one, because, again, they're pretty... Ooh, five and a seven, so that's under my 13, so that's two. Oh, excellent, yes. So, yeah, he... That'll add one momentum to the pool, and, yeah, as you're talking, just sort of chatting back and forth, you uh, unleash some witticisms on him, and he chuckles along with you. Probably about, you know, the, the Klingon, the Beta Z, and the human walking to a bar. You know, that kind of joke. Yeah. Uh, the android ducks. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> Classic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> just laughing at my own dumb ass. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, All right, so yeah. So just so you know, we're just doing you know standard physical. Um, I am also doing a uh, using the cortical scanner to look at your synaptic pathways to make sure that your time on the on a definitely strange alien planet hasn't impacted you in any any way. Yeah. So with the Vulcan, I'm specifically looking for Bendai syndrome. Okay. And of course, any other anomalies that you know might might be present, but uh, yeah. I don't think it's Bendai because they're not acting violent, so I don't know. Okay, go ahead and give me that roll, and uh, we'll say it's at a difficulty of two because you're doing a more focused roll, but Vulcan anatomy is pretty well documented. Documented. Uh, that is two successes. Excellent. Um... There are some trace chemicals in his body, like there were in the, um, I have forgotten, in Tipple. Right. Uh, but no, it has not been Thy Syndrome. But, but you see, you there, to... there might be some um, chemical, the chemicals might have some similarities to those. Do I have enough, do I have enough GANs yet to pinpoint if this is impacting like their cognitive functions or is this like a, a a high that's impacting them so not 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 affecting them cognitively but just making them really really relaxed um i would say that you probably don't have that okay. information yet but zeroing in on what's going on yeah okay cool um i mean we don't have to if you don't want to, I mean, we can skip ahead. I, I do want to scan one of the humans. Yeah. And maybe one of the beta Zs, but we could do roles. Yeah, we can we just... Have to role play that yeah. out. We can just say that you uh, get some scans. Uh, you're not exactly sure what is going on, but the one human aboard, uh, he does come in for the scan. You might question it a little more. He's a little more paranoid. Um, make me an insight... Uh, command. Okay. Uh, difficulty? Uh, we'll say it's a difficulty of one. Uh, insight and command. Uh, one, uh, one success. Okay, uh, that's all you needed. Um, you you notice that he is not, like, smiling and laughing like the other ones. He seems withdrawn and kind of paranoid and anxious, very anxious. And I'm sorry, this is, what was the species? Of the, was this, the uh, this is the human, Jace. Okay, Jace, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Ensign Jace. Uh, Ensign, uh, is there a problem? Are you feeling all right? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a little anxious, I guess. Um... Nothing out of the ordinary, just coming off the mission, you know? Yeah, I mean, I hope you're not anxious about this. This is just a standard checkup. I mean, we're not doing anything invasive. There's no... I mean, we're not checking for anything. We just want to make sure that you guys are, you know, in good health. Mm -hmm. So, but you just seem kind of... You don't seem as happy as the rest of the crew. Oh, um... Yeah, for me, the mission wasn't as um, fulfilling, I guess. Yeah, it happens. just, yeah, it didn't hit the same way as it did for them. 
I can understand that. And while we're talking, I'll I'll do the body scans and I'll hook up the yeah. scanner and be like, you know, this is just something that I'm doing for my own kind of research. Just wanted to see how your synaptic functions and your brain chemistry handles these kind of missions on a smaller ship like that. And mm -hmm. Just, you know, nothing, nothing to be worried about. Yeah. He, um, gets all the scans and he does have those, um, um, markers on the scans the chemical markers. as well yeah interesting okay well you know we do have a counselor on board the ship if you want to talk to somebody um, yeah I've, uh, I've talked with uh, dr cooper a bit yeah okay great it's yeah. uh it's helped a little yeah good you know, while you're here, you know, make sure you check out the holodecks. Maybe you can get mm -hmm. some of that kind of frustration out. And, you know, i got a great program for that if you just want, you know, like a really hard, violent <laughs> workout. <laughs> All right. Uh, so at the, um, after he leaves, you've scanned, uh, you know, a good portion of the crew. Uh, Dr. Tipple comes back in. Uh -oh. And is like, so um, how are the scans going? Actually, everything looks great. I mean, your crew's healthy. I mean, it's amazing that they're... You know, in such a frame of mind after a mission, you know, that was so long on such a tiny ship. Oh, yeah. Um, we did spend a good amount of it planet side, but even then, um, sort of the uh, rush you get from roughing it. No, nah, yeah. it's It's been a while since I've roughed it, but yeah, I, know, mm -hmm. I definitely know that feeling. You know, I did have uh, Luke Ensign Jace in here, mm -hmm. and he doesn't seem to be as happy as the rest of the crew hmm. yeah I'm, i can't say that i know the know them very well okay he just mentioned that he didn't spend a whole lot of time planet side during the mission it seems like everybody else was down there a lot i mean everyone has to take their turns maybe he just maybe he's just young and impetuous you know how humans can be just need to go a million miles an hour. I can understand that. Um, have you noticed that the Vulcans on your ship are behaving a tad abnormally? Uh, yeah, that's... Being around uh, the Betazoids has, I think, really loosened them up. You know, the get those empathic juices flowing and it sort of just seeps into you. Well, perhaps. I mean, I mean, I didn't realize that Vulcans were quite so susceptible to the Beta Zeds giving their own mental fortitude and their own abilities with mental manipulations. Um, give me a um, insight security role. And we're going to have a an opposed role. Okay. Uh, jeez. A five and a three on a security roll for me is amazing. Wow, yes. Nice. You, you beat him very handily. I don't know where these dice have been before, but... <laughs> um, he is definitely holding something back. That, that was a player side because I'm trying to decide if I want to push it or just note this and take it mm -hmm. to everybody else. Well, you know, that, that very well could be. Um, granted, I haven't, I haven't had a lot of chances around Vulcans. Um, they seem to not trust a Cleon Doctor very much. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's just my own... Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Maybe I'm projecting my own Klingon prejudices onto the Vulcans. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but he will, um, and at one point, uh, sorry, I'm trying to remember his name. Tipple? Uh, no, uh, one of the, uh, we'll say that the captain drops by. Ooh. And, um, the captain of the Nolumbo, mm -hmm. um, Captain Akil. Akil? Um, A-K-I-L. Akil Trice is her name. 
and she invite um you know it was like i heard that you were really excited about the um possible medical advancements so we wanted to invite you and your uh, some of your crew over to take a look at our research that is very intriguing captain i appreciate it um i would have to get clearance from my commanding officer and mm -hmm. the head of our security before i can make that decision trust me if it was up to me i'd be there over there right now digging through all your research and looking at your samples but protocol being what it is i have to go through the proper channels so i will get back to you as soon as i can mm -hmm. uh and what is um akel is she vulcan is she uh, akel is a betazoid betazoid uh can i try to talk the captain into her physical uh yeah she will um she is a little reluctant, but um, you can uh, you can talk her into it. You are a chief medical officer, so you do technically that, outrank her when it comes to <laughs> yeah. Because we all know how good captains are about the yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I, I'll, maybe to prompt her prompt her along, I'll be like, as soon as I get get all the the physical physicals done. For the ship, uh, my commanding officer most likely will let me go over and look at your samples. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Grease the reels. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're not going to make you roll because you've okay. done this before. Um, what kind of a scan are you doing? Like a full spectrum scan, or again, it's going to be the you know the the preliminary body scan, which I'm not too concerned about because I'm not finding much there. But it's going to be the 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 uh, cortical scanner looking at for those chemical markers and how they're affecting the synaptic pathways, that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, you notice that she does have the same thing that every crew member that you have seen come through here has. Uh, we're going to do sort of a luck roll. We'll say it's an insight medicine for this. Difficulty? Um, we'll say it's a difficulty of one. Uh, that is a... I cannot see. I need to get my readers on. That's a 16 and an 11, so one success. One success? Okay. Um, you do notice something weird in her actual medical scan. Oh. Hmm. Uh, she apparently has had, in the recent past, a condition called Xanthi fever. Okay. So what is that? Um, we can have you roll again if you'd like, or you can spend a momentum to sort of know what that is. Uh, we are currently at four momentum. Yeah, because, I mean, as a player, I kind of know what Xanthi Fever is. Yeah. But, but we'll, we'll go ahead and roll for it. Okay. Again, uh, it's going to be like a difficulty one. one. And, but that would be yeah. more um, reason medical? Reason, Yeah, reason medical work. Cool. Uh, that is one critical success because I got a three. Okay, so uh, Xanthi fever is a condition that affects middle-aged Betazoids. Uh, basically, it takes their empathic abilities and starts imparting them on other people. That's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Basically, it starts inputting their their emotional state on other people. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm thinking of that of one of the episodes where Troy's mom has it. Yes, yeah, but I'm yeah, not yeah, middle aged. Yeah, yeah. Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Deep Space Nine. yeah. Um, it's a it's not that it's not a spoiler, but this is what the guy was holding back. Um, because okay. you know he yeah. doesn't want to say his captain is getting up there in age. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sure, that makes sense. 
So I'm just asking as a player, did you say she had it or currently has it? Uh, she has. She had it. She, had she no it. longer has it, but she has antibodies from okay. it still in her system. Huh. And is the was from what we've seen of the captain? Is she acting as happy and go lucky as the rest of the crew? Yeah. Is she normal yeah. captain stoic. Um, she is acting as happy as the rest of the crew, but that is also not unlike a betazoid. No. Yeah. No. You're right. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, you know, when we get done with it, I was like, you know what, Captain, yeah. everything looks good here. Um, mm -hmm. Not not to be, not not to pry into your business, but how long ago did you have Xanthi fever? Uh, she blushes a bit, and well, um, just before we made planet fall. So you didn't go down to the planet while you were, while you were infected with the fever? Oh, um... Oh, you would know this. Uh, it is in. It's very simple to cure. Yes, I just want to make sure that yeah. you know you no, are no, cleared I, to go before. Yeah. Yes, uh, okay. Topol uh, cleared me before okay, going. Right. Just you know, because out of all the scans I've done, that was the only you know serious ab, ab, ab something abnormal that popped up. Otherwise, your mm -hmm. crew is fit as a fiddle. Oh yes, um, I think the fresh air and. Um, just glow of the planet really helped. Oh, I'm sure it did. Mm -hmm. It sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, I heard that you had been invited to go uh, onto our ship because you were interested in some of the research we were doing. Yeah, um, definitely. I mean, I during uh, my academy days, I kind of also dabbled in botany for mm -hmm. applications in medical, you know, because it never fails if you're in some kind of planet-side... Uh, planet side or and on an away mission and things go wrong you know you don't have the technology available and it's always nice to be able to apply the local fauna to mm -hmm. cure whatever disease or injuries that you may suffer you know that your crew may suffer mm -hmm. well you definitely should come over um feel free to bring some of your crew i've noticed that a lot of them have been pretty eager to get to know us oh yeah definitely um i just need to get permission from my commander and our head of security mm -hmm. and yeah we'll see what we can arrange i'm sure we can do that uh from what i understand your commander has become uh has grown quite fond of the core oh i hadn't heard that yet but mm -hmm. commander halata is you know she's definitely you know personable and she's easy very approachable mm -hmm. all right uh, so, what are people doing? I'm not going over to that ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, goodness. Rosrin is, um, he's going to try to make a point to kind of wander by the areas where the crew of the Nilimbo is. Um, mm -hmm. Just, you know, kind of make a point to walk by a couple times, see what's going on over there, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to just to keep an eye on things, uh, you know, see if any, he notices anything unusual or hear overhear something that might be interesting, you know, uh, that go, sort of thing. Go ahead and make me a um, insight security. Absolutely. And we'll see what you can overhear. Absolutely. And this will be one of those sliding scale ones. One or two success? How many successes? Oh, the difficulty, like I said, it's going to be a sliding scale. The more successes you have, the more Okay, then I got two it. successes. Two successes? Yeah, nine um, and a ten, which are both below. Yeah. We'll say that you overhear um, Jace talking to Vakor. And Jace is like, I just, I, sir, I don't understand it. We're, it's against protocol, and I don't know why we did it. And v you hear Vakor is like, well, because it's important, we get it's important we get the information, and we can't. We're on the cusp of a breakthrough. We can't stop. I don't like it any more than you do, but it's it is the way it is. Yeah, Rajan just kind of, you know, 
keep walking on by and uh and as soon as he kind of gets out of that section uh you know walks by if he doesn't hear or see anything else mm -hmm. uh he will uh tap and uh commander halada um i was just walking through uh you know the, checking on our our guests just making my presence known and i overheard um one of the the ensigns talking to what was it the second in command yeah the second yeah. officer the the second the first officer. the first officer the first officer um and he mentioned something uh the ensign seemed to be uh quite upset because they had broken some kind of protocol thank you very much for bringing that to my attention yeah so i'm not quite sure um the the uh first officer said that you know they were on the cusp of some kind of breakthrough and they didn't want to stop and he didn't really like it but they felt that that's what they had to do i don't know exactly what protocol that might be but i felt like you should know yes definitely thank you we all know how i feel about protocol <laughs> yes <laughs> absolutely i will see what i can research with that and i'm also gonna let the captain know that one because that seems like something i should do <laughs> all right uh the captain asks you to try and figure out what protocol was broken so they know he doesn't want to move ahead with anything in case it was like a minor mm -hmm. breach of yeah yeah something minor um i'm gonna try to just do a quick search through their logs before i go like trying yep. to dig directly Yep, so that will be a reason security. Okay. Difficulty? Uh, it's a difficulty of one. It's a, it's, you're just doing a quick scan through their logs. Okay, I did get one success. One success, excellent. Mm -hmm. uh, you notice that in the crew manifest for the, um, basically, when people sign in and out as they go planet side, uh, Dr. Floch and uh, Dr. Ginnell uh, did not return from the last mission. Did, did the ship's manifest show them as being on board now? They do not. Like, okay, so that's that's a breach of protocol, right? <laughs> they yes. left them planet side? Yep. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll let the captain know that's what's going on. <laughs> All right. Um, you basically receive orders to do some research and to basically get as much information as you can because you're not the only one who's mentioned that they've been acting a little wonky. Okay. Mm. <laughs> All right, well, we'll go back to to trying to get information out of the core since he's the one I've been talking to the most. All right. Um, um, I was going to pop over. Actually, right now is a really good time for us to take a break. Let's see. Uh, because we are about halfway through our session here. So, um, before we take our break, we would ask you all, if you're enjoying what we do here, go ahead and give us a follow so you know when we're going to be on and doing our thing. And if you've been following us for a while, or if you have a uh, Amazon Prime membership, we would really appreciate if you'd subscribe. Uh, for Amazon Prime, you actually get a free Twitch subscription every month. You do have to go in and redo it every month, whereas a normal uh, subscribe subscription, you can just sort of let it go, let it go month to month. Um, but yeah, so uh, we will be back in about ten minutes, and we will try to figure out what's been going on here. All right, we'll see you when we get back, y'all. Thank you, everyone.
Welcome back to the Voyages of. Um, before we get started back on our mission, I just wanted to let you know about the upcoming shows we have here on the Rook and Rasp, Rasp channel. Tomorrow we have The Seven Sea by Leaps and Bounties. Uh, Danny is actually going to be running that for us. And that will get started at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, I'm assuming? Mm -hmm. That seems right. Mm -hmm. um, then on Saturday we have Seriously Let's Play and that is going to be the Overlight game by Renegade Games which I'm really excited I've seen that book a lot and flipped through it and it's a gorgeous book so I'm excited to see how it goes down and that will be at 2pm Eastern 11pm Pacific this Sunday we have the Illuminated Page I believe they are continuing on with Murder on the Orient Express and that will be at 5pm Eastern 2pm Pacific and Monday, we have the next episode of The Voyages of. It'll be episode 19, A Judgment Enforced. And that one will be run by Matt. And uh, I believe I'm in that one. I'm not sure who else is. Me. Here. Schedule. <laughs> Rajan and Chagrin together again. Excellent. Battle, battle bros. I believe yep. that is one of my rare weeks <laughs> off. We'll just get tired and start shooting things again. <laughs> Sure. Right. I'm definitely not going to be in that episode because I'll get hit. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> Just take Minkler with you. He's like a magnet for the stuff. Hey, right. he is exceedingly good at taking phaser fire for us. He is. True. True, that's what Klingons are, are very good at that. <laughs> All right, so we are starting back up. Um, Halada, I believe you wanted to speak with Vakor. Yes. All right. And I think I know how I'm going to approach this, which is the one of the two people who got left behind is the one he told me usually made the duty rosters, right? Yes, the chief researcher. So I'm going to approach it as the, hey, I'd really like to meet her. Um, go ahead and make me a... Uh, actually, we won't, we won't do rolls yet. It's like, okay. um, yeah, sure thing. Um... Uh, she is currently on the other ship, but if you'd like, we can get you guys over so you can uh, meet and talk with her. That sounds excellent. All right. I believe that um, uh, Dr. Haskins has been invited as well, but feel free to bring along a few more crew. I mean, since we're rotating out, I'm sure these uh, peop uh, the crewmen on the ship still will be incredibly excited to see new faces uh you know from the manifest there should be about 20 crewmen still on the nalumbo okay so paranoia is definitely running high since i know she's not on the ship to meet mm -hmm. so razrin gets to come with so that i'm not <laughs> paranoid alone <laughs> all right uh and i'll invite um zeke zeke because he's the one who started me down the rabbit hole of the humans not going on the planet, so. Mm -hmm. But I am oh. giving all of them the information that we are going to meet someone who is not actually there. So something weird is going on. So, I mean, are we actually meeting right now? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I'm, are we I'm, meeting as a... Yeah, I'm inviting you guys to come with. Yeah, Commander, um, I would seriously try suggest not going over to that ship all i've been doing scans all day of the crew they all have this weird chemical signature in their scans that could be altering their behaviors um even the humans are presented with it uh the i don't know if you're aware of this but most of the crew are in some ways telepathically sensitive of course the beta zeds are Vulcans are known to have, you know, if not outright telepathy, they have the mental willpower to mind meld and things like that. And the other two species are known to be either empath empathic or just straight out, uh, not psychotic. That's not the right word. Psychic? Psychic. Thank you. I mean, the first one and then the other. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know what it is. It's definitely something that came from that planet. And 
I don't know. I don't. I I have not been able to ascertain if it's contagious or not. And my fear is they're trying to get us over on that ship to expose us to whatever they've been exposed to. And in the uh, humans, it seems to. I haven't. I haven't seen. I haven't had a chance to see uh, their engineer Roscoe yet. But Jace, it seems, whatever the chemical is, seems to be a depressive in his mental state. Commander. So. Ooh. So yeah. I, your concern is definitely noted, but this is a situation where we need to get as much information as quickly as we can because they left people planet side when they should not have, and we need as much data as I can get. Wait, they left people on the planet? Yes. That's oh, we why should... we're going over there to meet someone who's not actually there. She's still planet side. I suggest that we go armed. That seems like an excellent plan. I mean, that's up I'm to way you. ahead of you. <laughs> but maybe uh, subtly. Because this was already sus. Rajan showed up to this whole thing like Strapped. with arms. <laughs> <laughs> Three phasers arriving. <laughs> it's pretty hard to conceal weapons in a Star Trek uniform, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is the, yeah. Are the Type 1s those like. The type, little, <laughs> the type ones are the yeah they're like a almost like a cell phone sized you can but, slip them in your just keep them in your boot do starfleet uniforms have pockets no no they that's don't. Um, horrible enterprise like original um scott bacula enterprise do which is one of the reasons i like them so much <laughs> they're basically just flight suits, but it's why all the equipment either has a shoulder strap or a clip. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you you go to the weapons closet and get a belt. Yeah, which is what Rajan has. Uh, he's got a belt. Mm -hmm. with I guess his that's on it. I guess that's one way to equalize pockets is just take them away from everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. If Bims so... can't have pockets, nobody can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got a type 2 phaser. Yeah. Type 2 I, is, um, you guys can all take a type 2 phaser. They won't think that that's overtly weird? They might, but do you care? Mm, that's the only question. Only a little. <laughs> yeah. Not enough to not do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, things, right, if things get rocky, you know. Lieutenant Commander Zeke can just smooth the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zeke's going to, you know, follow um, Rosburn's lead in terms of security uh, setup um, with the only kind of thing of suggesting that maybe we just have an open comm with somebody. Yeah. Um, plant the ship side. Yeah. Rupert... Rosburn's going to have some of his security, like, you know, the ones that he trusts the most, um, just, you know, on standby, just in mm. case. Saying, hey, we're going to the other ship, you know, standard protocol is just to make sure somebody, um, in case something happens, like there's an accident or something like that. So that's how he's going to phrase it, because he doesn't want to freak anybody out and tell them something's wrong, you know, and that's why we're going over there. He just, you know, was kind of trying to keep it, you know, protocol superficial just be on standby you know ready if if you're called mm -hmm. and from my position as the doctor i mean i know humans aren't really psychic klingons definitely aren't yeah um zeke is zeke human. is a human okay I human the, and the trills aren't known to be psychic at all uh, they have some empathic stuff with their symbiotes, but that's a, like a closed circuit system. Right, and the only one I'm not sure about is Commander Halada. Is your species? Uh, Cations are not psychic. Okay. No, humans can be, but it's yeah. not a common thing. Yeah, it's not like we're, that's not something the humans are known for. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted to keep that straight because as a doctor, I would know that. As a player, I was yep. making sure. Yep. All right. So, are you transporting to the Nalumbo? Yes. All right. Is there another way to get over there? I mean, I we mean, could take a runabout, but that seems excessive. 
uh, probably a shuttle. Runabouts are significantly large. Oh, but... okay. Shuttle. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's fine. T- take the shuttle over there because we're wanting to maintain quarantine. If we want to bring any samples back, that would be the excuse. I, I'm all about a shuttle instead of the transporter. I would be willing to do shuttle based on that logic, yeah. Are you going to talk to uh, someone about it? Yeah, yeah. Because we got to, right. like, clear that with both ships, right? Yeah. So who are you asking on the, um, the Limbo crew? Um, who... Who should I be asking? Um, whoever, whoever that is. I mean, uh, Vakor is the one you were talking about about going over there, okay. so he would yeah. wouldn't be a bad one. Okay, then yeah, I'll talk to Vakor about it. Yeah. Um, basically, when you ask, he's like, "We can't really share any of the samples we have. We can come show you them in the lab setting." But we have safety protocols in place in the lab that would not work outside of the lab. Basically, there are terrariums they have, and you couldn't really move them because this is Star Trek and everything is built into walls. And that um, taking anything off of that sh- off the Nalumbo would grossly violate um, quarantine protocol. Makes perfect sense. So, yeah, I guess we will transport over, and I am so very sorry, Zeke. <laughs> Zeke is visibly nervous and upset, but is following orders. <laughs> he All had right. a transporter yeah. incident, so... <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> were, you, were you spliced, or were you cloned? Um, You have a twin out there? <laughs> not saying yet. <laughs> yeah, Roshan isn't that happy about it either, just from like a safety kind of thing, you know. They'd have to get transported back in an emergency, you know, it can get kind of but mm-hmm. if that's what we gotta do to kind of keep on the down low. Well, I mean you, you can be trans you can have your ship transport you back at any time. Right. Mm-hmm. And you guys said you're gonna keep an open comm signal, so Yeah. So everybody stay professional. Yeah. <laughs> All right. right. A professional as we're investigating fellow Starfleet officers for dereliction of duty at minimum. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if uh. they, yeah, their, their, their protest on quarantine, whatever, is not sitting real well with me considering they left someone behind. Two yeah. people behind. Uh, but you, um, um, Key, do you do know that that is in fact protocol? Um, he's well, not yeah. lying about that, but yeah, no, no, no. If they just violate, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you guys get into the transporter and beam over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, when you arrive on the Nalumbo, you notice that the transporter room is empty. Okay. Like, in in reading their logs and stuff, I at least have a basic idea of how the ship's laid out, right? Uh, yes. It is, again, it is sort of transporter room, labs, a small cafeteria, med a medical desk, and then <laughs> the bridge. Okay. So, if no one's here to stop us, I'm going to poke around. Okay. You poking around the transporter room? The transport room, and then I'll go out to the labs and stuff, yeah. Alright. Uh, what is everyone else doing while she's sort of uh, poking around the transporter room? Yes. So the... Raj... Go ahead. I'll let, I'll let you go first. I was going to say, as a player, it strikes me as odd that there wasn't anybody, because it just seems like on the television show, there's always somebody on the other end. But I guess I don't know in Starfleet, like, because we're at this resting place how exactly odd it is that there's nobody there yeah but even if they don't need anybody there they kind of invited us over a guest so it seems a little rude (laughs) to like invite us over to look at their stuff and then like 
nobody's here to greet us as guests. Like, it still is sus. Especially, from that how, back. especially how eager they were to get us over here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. you know, Rosrin's spots are itching over here because <laughs> this are is you sus. your phaser, Rosrin? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, he's... he's he, he has his hand on it. Let's let's say that he has his hand on it. He hasn't pulled it out, but he has his hand on it for sure. All right. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a basic description of the room. There is sort of the six-person transponder pad, like more classic Trek, like original series Trek than Next Generation. Because again, this is a significantly older ship. Then there's the podium that the transporter officer works at there's a couple of lockers that you're assuming carry like whatever meager like phasers they have they're away team gear that's not scientific and then a door leading out of the room before we open before the commander goes out into the hallway <laughs> uh what was what was the person that you were talking to commander i was talking to their first officer, Vakor. I'm gonna just computer. What is the current location of Commander Vakor? Um, the computer does not respond. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This doesn't feel right. Nope. Uh, Rajan wants to look around for signs of like. When was the last time somebody was here? You know, um, like like does what? it look like people had just been there? Is it a little? Dusty? Like, when was the last time this stuff was used? Uh, give me a, a an insight security. Alright. Success and a complication. Seven and a twenty. Excellent. Crap. Um, <laughs> so, uh, it looks like people have been here. Um, okay. You can check the transpo transporter logs. Um, you see that they have been transporting people over to the Serenitis in increments. Okay. Um, no one has come back from the Serenitis yet, but they're due for like three or four days before they cycle. Okay. Okay. Um... And, and uh, Rosrin will say that, though. He'll point it, he'll say, well, it looks like they have been uh, transporting people over at the right amount of time, you know, at the right places, and have been using this area. So, they mentioned that they were using the transporter to do some of the, quarant like the quarantine stuff, right? Yeah, um, the way the transporter works is it can filter out certain pathogens and such. Um, is there a way to check its logs to see if it recognizes, like, the chemical that the doctor's been finding? Uh, you can try, but the, um, it's probably been purged by now. Okay. The bu the phase buffer doesn't stick around for a long period of time. And sure. they've been using it without it because there's no need to use it now because... Because they're not going down to yep. the planet or right back up. Cool, 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 cool. So it was worth a thought. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go see what's out in the rest of the ship if y'all are done in here. Yeah. Uh, Rosrin is, you know, as we're getting ready to leave, Rosrin's going to tap just to check that the communications work. You know, he's paranoid. He's like, how do we know we didn't come over here and now we can't talk to anybody? So he's just going to be like, Lieutenant Irax, the security team, we have, uh, we are now over at the Nolimbo. Uh, please confirm. Uh, and this is where the complication comes in. <laughs> uh, you go to tap your badge, and it's not there. Not it's. Yeah, there has been a transporter mishap. Uh, I look at the others. I look at the others. Do they have theirs? Nope. Oh, no. Oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> I told you Brilliant. to take a shuttle. Well, yep. how are we? <laughs> you, you absolutely did. <laughs> oh, <blocks>. boy. <laughs> well, crap. And that was Zeke, not. 
Do do I do I have any idea how to potentially reverse that? I am not usually engineery sort, but like we or need are we just Mara. without combat just <laughs> We need a bar here. Uh, you can, but it is going to be very difficult. You can okay. try. So what? What? What is the rating of the difficulty for trying this? What would we need to roll? It would be. Um, you, it would be an extended task, and you'd have to basically oh. go into the phase buffer, find out what went wrong, and reconfigure it to bring it back. And even I then. Don't... You're not positive it's going to work, and the yeah, complication my... range for it is going to be pretty significant. Yeah, my talent's not going to apply to that. I don't. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think I even feel comfortable trying to do that. If it was a one, if it was a one and done, I could, you know, use my talent. I'm I'm a doctor, not a. Mm -hmm. and roll for you know use engineering for my medical role. Mm -hmm. But if it's an extended task, that's not going to work. Right. We can get me to a shuttle, and out the dock, I can get us back to the Serenitas side. Yeah. Do a lot of recreational flight. Well, you're a pilot too, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, All right. they gotta have shuttles on here, so... Yeah, and, like, they've gotta have comms to our ship. It's just off-putting. Okay. Anyhow. Mm -hmm. I'm just worried about when we open that door. It's gonna be creepy. I know it. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Uh, All right. Time to open the door. Uh, when you open the door, there is a faint pink mist. And this is where I'm going to have everyone roll me a fitness... Uh, we'll say fitness security. Sweet. That's a good one for Roswin. Yeah. And it is going to be a difficulty of... Difficulty of four for the for Keed, Rosrin, and Halada, and a difficulty of three for a Zeke. I only got two dice, so yeah. Uh, 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 How many momentum do we have right now? Uh, we currently have four momentum. I have a. Uh, uh... The Even survival count. A survival would count, yes. I have okay. strategy, you know, like hold my breath, go somewhere before this mist gets. Unfortunately, me. it's sort of a wave oh. over you. No, failure isn't death. <laughs> okay. <sighs> there has been a lot of us. I, I got a crit and a 19. So I got two successes. I got one success. I got one. Alright. And Dr. Cooper? I'm just debating if I wanted to buy anything. But yeah. If you want to buy a momentum, go for go it. Go for it. You're the only one that could possibly succeed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, I don't even. I don't think one die is going to do it. I don't know if we want to invest in, in two for me. Give it a try. But, yeah, well, I mean, six why momentum. not? Well, why it's not? six right now, momentum, so. Alright. Yeah. Alright, I'll add two. Alright, okay. so spend spending three to add three two for you? Yep. So spending three momentum. Okay. And, uh, what's the complication range? The complication range is 20 right now. Oh, okay. Um, I only got two successes. We have two rerolls, so if you want to reroll one, I'm for it. Yep. Do we have to re-roll all of them? No, yeah, just re-roll one. Yeah, just re-roll. You can just re-roll the ones that didn't succeed. Okay. Whoop. It's a floor dice. That's a success. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they both failed again. Oh, no. <laughs> we're oh just not God. meant to succeed here. <laughs> it's okay. All right. We're, we're there, just all going to be loopy. There has been a running invisible tally of things. To create mm -hmm. the difficulty. <laughs> uh, yeah. Pink mist, I guess. Embraces mm -hmm. us all. <laughs> so as you are walking through the hallway, the hallway seems strange. The, um, 
it seems longer than it should be for a ship this size. This is not good. They gotta have rebreathers here, right? Like, can we find some rebreathers? Uh, if so you we're can not breathing this in. Uh, you can look for um, like survival supplies. Indeed. Uh, he would like to do that. All right. Um, you, where would you like to look? Because again, you are in a hallway and there are sort of doors coming off of it. Well, a lab, preferably, if you can see, because labs deal with potentially dangerous stuff, so that might be something they might have for safety while they're doing their experiments. So if he sees a door that's like, lab, you know, like, he's he's gonna go in there. Uh, truth be told, most of the doors in this place are labs. <laughs> He's going to take the first one <laughs> that okay. he comes to. Uh, what's this going to be? Uh, it will be an insight uh, security. Sort insight of a spot security. check. All right. Five and twelve, two successes. Excellent. Right. Um, you succeed in finding sort of like a hazmat kit. Uh-huh. And cool. uh, because it's made for the lab, there we'll say there's enough for the crew. Sweet. Um, Sweet. And you also notice that there are what appear to be sort of vines growing in the corners of the rooms. Vines growing in the corner. Okay. Well, we're going to grab the hazmat suits <laughs> and uh, and bring them out to people and pass them out to everybody. Mm -hmm. And he's going to say, look, I don't, and there were some vines in there growing just randomly in the corner. We brought tricorders, right? Can we get some? Well, do I have presence of mind to start administrating some hyposprays? Uh, you do not know what you are hypospraying against. Well, I was I going mean, to use, I was gonna use uh, del Delvinin. I can't say it right. It's a broad spectrum antitoxin that's commonly used when someone's been po poisoned by an unknown source or substance. Yeah, you can go ahead and uh, shoot people up. Cool. Well, so, we so I guess while Rosrin is passing out the hazmat suits, I'll just start <laughs> hypo spraying yeah. everybody. Sweet. A broad spectrum antitoxin, hopefully. Hmm? We at least have some protection now. <laughs> at least a little bit. So we know the computer's. So we know the computer's not responding to voice commands. Is the computer system completely down if I go to a console? Uh, you go to a console, make me a, uh, same thing, insight security. Okay. I got one success. One success? It is not responding to you. Okay, so we can't access, oh, at least I can't access the computer to call the other ship and let them know what's going on. Maybe if we... Turn the lights on and off really fast. And <laughs> <laughs> um, Morse code to the other ship. So we've got vines growing in the corners. We've got weird pink mist that we've all inhaled. Don't know what it's going to do. The corridor and feels really... They do nothing, really... fine. <laughs> <laughs> the corridor so, feels longer than it should be, and everyone seems to be missing. And so we, did have, to... uh, we did have two momentum buys in chat, so we yes. should be up to... Five now, yes, because we were at yeah. So um, I, thank you, chat. Can I scan mm -hmm. with my tricorder just the environment to see if I can pick anything up mm -hmm. that's relating to what I've been seeing on patients? Yeah. So can I use medical reason? Yeah, that'll work. I'm gonna say it's a difficulty of two because it's a weird thing. That's a one and a six. All right. So the one is only critical if I can apply a focus? No, uh, one no, is the always one... critical. Oh, one's yeah. always a critical? Cool. One so is always a critical, but you can't... Hmm? Three. So three. Yes. I was just con uh, confirming that you cannot... Um, you got two success... Yeah, you got two dice that succeeded, so you get three. Um, but the focus, what it does is expands your critical range. Right. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. 
<laughs> okay, so I tried to mute, but it didn't work. <laughs> it happens. So yeah, the um, this mist definitely is in line with what caused the thing, and you are reasonably sure that this is some sort of a spore. Mm. I'll re relay the it information. <laughs> it must be the the mist that they make. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you should have brought the Benadryl. <laughs> yeah, this is it. suddenly taking a right oh, turn into an Allegra Colin, commercial. Even in space, can we not get away from it? Can we not get away from it? So I'll relay uh, this to the commander saying, This is exactly what I've been seeing in all the medical scans. This is a spore of some sort. What do you think, Commander? Should we try to find people here? Should we try to find a shuttle and go back to the Serenitis? Uh, Zeke? Yes. Can I have you make me an insight security roll? Difficulty of one. Well, I've rolled a lot of failures on that recently. Let's see. No. No, two 18s. Oh, wow. Okay. Do a reroll. Do a reroll. We have we another one. We do have one, one reroll left. I'm not going to say the things. To jinx me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there's two successes. Excellent. Um, you see something flit around the corner. You're not exactly sure what it is, but you notice something uh, opalescent. And um, it was probably at about two and a half to three foot off the ground. So, besides the hallway looking longer, are there any other psychological effects I should be thinking about that would be affecting Zeke's behavior right now? Um, not that you can think of. You know that this is some sort, of, you know that uh, Dr. Haskins has said that this is some sort of neurological thing. Okay. But now that you have it, you're not sure what's going on. Okay. So if I should just be playing Zeke, because I would normally play yeah. Zeke, yeah. then... Um... You know you've been dosed with some sort of neurological toxin, but you're also a Starfleet officer and have literally met gods before, so <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell if you're tripping or if this is... Yeah. <laughs> uh... Commander, I may have seen something that was not plant life, but animal. Well, I believe right now our mission is to figure out as much of what's going on here as possible. So that involves finding anything that might be living on this pla on the ship that is not a plant. And if it can talk to us, figuring out what it has to say. So which direction did it go? The tiny little flying thing went that way. Okay, let's go that way. It uh, basically it flitted out of the lab and went down the hallway and through a T junction. Mm. Uh, key um, uh, Zeke noticed it because everyone else was sort of scanning and yeah, yeah, talking, you know, mm -hmm. strategizing. Yep. Yeah. Zeke's, Zeke's a little out of his element, you know? Look, Roger's tearing up. He needs to take space <laughs> duct tape to cover these gaps or anything. That's what he's going to do. Zeke's <laughs> like, terrified of having to get back onto a transport. He's like, the last time this happened, I had to stop a fight between Chevron and Keen, so <laughs> I, I just... <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yeah, so... Yeah, he'll follow the commander. That's what Rosman's going to do. She wants yeah. to go after it. He did ask, like, are we going to try to find shuttle or are we trying mm -hmm. to? She made her choice. So, uh, yeah, he's going to follow. At the ready. On guard. All right. Uh, so, Halado, where are you heading? Well, um, to the T-junction, and then I'm going to see if there's any sign of what direction it may have gone. Like, is it still visible? Are there any doors suspiciously open? <laughs> like, uh, you get there and um, you just see the hallway. 
the um, the mist is still there. Um, it is sort of hazy. You know, it's thicker in some areas, thinner in some. It's not like smoke where it's like all at the top, or if you've ever been in like a bog or swamp where there's like mist rolling off the water. It's sort of interspersed. Does it appear to be coming from a specific direction, or is it just kind of stable everywhere? Just sort of everywhere. Again, there's some pockets that are heavier, some that are less so. It kind of looks like someone smeared a little Vaseline on the camera lens. Oh, okay. Sure. Um... <laughs> All right. It so is creating no... sort of like a dreamlike feeling. Okay. If there's no indicator of what way it went, I'm going to do the left hand rule. Okay. Are you checking in various rooms or. Yeah, kind of just as we pass each room, peek in, see if there's anyone in there, see if yeah. any, like, if the unidentified flying object is in there, you know. <laughs> All right. Who um, remembers anything you... like that? Rajan's doing the SWAT. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> clear. Just trying to peek in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> not uh, in the back. This, not at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Would uh, someone want to roll me one of the action die? It's just a d6. If you have the actual action die, let me know what you roll on it. Otherwise, let me know what you roll on the d6. Got a blank. You got a blank? So yeah, this is another lab. Okay. It seems much like the last one. There's some, you know, arbor uh, not arboretums, um, eight not atriums. Those things, what you put lizards in. Terrariums? Terrariums, yes. There are some terrariums along the outside wall. These ones are empty. It looks like this lab probably hasn't seen use. Okay. There's a bunch of labs, and there's, like, some dirt samples in these terrariums, but you know they also went to multiple planets. Yeah, uh, I believe a couple were described as mud balls. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, nothing moving, nothing living, nothing breathing. Next room. All right. We'll say that you guys kind of poke around for a bit. Um, what are you doing while you? Is it just like pop in, check corners, or is it like you a little investigate in each room? If there's anything like. If I see something that looks like the pink cloud of mist is coming from it, or mm -hmm. like some of the plants they described as having taken off the planet, those would be things I'd want to investigate more. I'm also probably actually like calling out to see if anyone will respond. Yeah. Hello. Um, Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're not really getting you're not getting any responses. Um, Keed, are you still doing scans? Yeah, as we're. Oh, I thought I was on mute for a minute. Uh, <laughs> As, as we're walking through the hallway, you know, one eye on the tricorder, one eye kind of scanning to see any UFO floating critters. But yeah, I'm scanning as we're walking, looking for anomalies or even life signs. Mm -hmm. All right, I will have you roll a, um, it'll be a science check using the tricorder. Okay. Um, it could be reason, insight... I mean, I'd even give you probably a control if, depending on how you're doing the thing. Uh, da, da, da. I would say control. Control just feels right. It's like because I'm focused yeah. on looking for danger. Or, you know. Yeah, yeah. You are being very methodic. Right. Uh, my God, this is the best I've ro rolled in this <laughs> game. Yeah. That's two successes. Sweet. Excellent. Yes, it was going to be a difficulty, too. I forgot to mention that, and I need to remember that. Um, you are getting flits of life signs as you scan. Like, you're like, okay, uh, there's a life sign within the vicinity, and it's gone. Okay. And then 20 feet down, okay, I've got another life sign, and it's... You're not... They're not staying on long enough to get reads on or try to figure out what it is. Or but, you to pinpoint it. Yeah. Okay. I'll relay that to everybody, especially the commander, since she's kind of leading the search, saying, I am getting spurts of life signs, but they don't stay long. They're just, they, they pop up at the tricorder. As soon as I look at it, they're gone. Have you ever seen anything like this before? Never. 
I'm and I'm not picking up like any persistent like human betazoid Vulcan life signs at all, correct? No. No. I'll relay that manif- information too. And per mm-hmm. the manifest, like there should still be people on board. They're not all yes. in the Serenitas. Yeah. Okay. According there to him, Roger be. can list off like who exactly is still supposed yeah. to be on the ship because he's been looking at the manifest. He's like, Yeah, there should be twenty people. Yeah, there's uh, uh you know, well eighteen because T U R missing yeah. you aren't actually yeah, here yeah 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 uh, it has a crew of 36 you have 16 on the serenitis okay and uh they did all pass you know the screening process before they came over right when is the next like set of people supposed to transport over uh, we are on day two of the um, their um, R and R, and you know they were supposed to switch out every three days. So these sixteen, yeah, these sixteen will go back. Then, um, well, not all of these sixteen. Ten of these sixteen will go back. The um, superior officers are all staying on board, and then ten will go back. Ten will come in three days. Ten will go back. Ten will come in. And that'll be the finish. Okay. Um, I'm also going to keep checking for, like, if there's a computer that is working better than the others. I know they're an interconnected system, but, like, yeah. uh, give sometimes me another... stubbornness wins. <laughs> oh, yeah. Give me another one of those rolls. I believe it's inside security. What's the difficulty? It is a difficulty of two. I think we're back up to six if you want to... Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna buy I'm gonna buy a die. Yep. So spend one momentum, buy a die. Um uh, Well I got two successes. And a complication? Uh-huh. <laughs> Glorious. Uh-huh. All right. I mean <laughs> Um Yes. Uh as you are as you go to poke at the computer. You notice around the screen, the touch screen, vines are creeping up. And sort of, you go look and pull open the door to check where, like, the isolinear chip compartment is. And it's choked with vines. And as you're looking in there, um, all of a sudden you feel something sort of bite your hand. Oh, joy. Um, yep. was nice can I catch it? <laughs> uh, you cannot, because this is a complication. This is a punishment, not a reward. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to try anyway. Why can't it be both? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I will report that I have been bitten, because that is a thing I should okay. do. By what? Uh, I don't know. I did not see it. <laughs> yeah, she she jumps back. I'm assuming you jump back kind of startled, like... <laughs> Yeah. That exact noise. It is very yeah. unpleasant. <laughs> um, if everyone else would like to give me that beautiful insight security role that has just become the spot check. <laughs> I mean, if you guys have a better idea for a spot check, I am open to suggestions. Yeah, I mean, it seems really, it Jeez. seems reasonable. Sweet. You guys are going to think I'm cheating, but I got a five and a one. Good job. Oh, nice. Ooh. My purple dice are on fire tonight. Good. All right. Okay, so... Um, Zeke and Rosrin, you both see, uh, again, something very opalescent dart a- away from the area and out of the room. Uh, Keed, with your three, su- well, with two successes, because, yeah, you well, will one, one of them was a one, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. saying two of those three, you notice this. Gotcha, okay. Um, it seems to be... A thing, it looks to be about a foot tall. Um, the opalescent shine they're seeing, those are definitely wings. And they flutter out and dart away. So it definitely is flying or hovering at least? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Commander, I just saw it fly out the door. It's, it's definitely got wings. It's about a foot tall. Uh, so the computer systems aren't working because the vines have grown into them. That's not good. I, I don't... Do I know how to fix that? I don't think I know how to fix that. 
I think I could like tear the vines out, but I'm not sure that would actually fix it. <laughs> you need an engineer and a botanist. Awesome. And have... maybe an exterminator. <laughs> awesome. So, so I, I have to... half of one of those things, right? <laughs> I'm going to go look at. Did it bite your hand? Well, yeah. you you are a cat, and a cat is at least half of an exterminator. <laughs> I'm going to scan her hand and make sure that she's not having a weird reaction. Is yeah. Is swelling? Um, there are some trace elements of stuff, but nothing dangerous. Does it still, does it hurt, Commander? I don't? mean, it stung. It'll be fine. It, Just, it, like, it seems the important thing to to report that it happened, because oh, yeah. stuff's it, going but, crazy. I, I think you're going to be okay, but I won't feel safe in that assessment until we get back to the ship and out of this pink haze. That seems completely reasonable. Also, if the vines are growing, I'm not exactly an engineer, but if the vines are growing into the consoles, what is that going to do to the warp core? That is a really good question that I do not know the answer to. At least, I'm assuming I don't know the answer to it. Do I know the answer to it, Rob? Um, well... It depends. Um, <laughs> the warp core will easily destroy these vines. These don't look like they're made out of... They're, they're, they're vines. You could, with a decent... Keyed with your knife that you carry, you could easily, like, machete your way through this. Okay, okay. Um, it doesn't seem to be penetrating anything. It's like they're weaving in through cracks. So as long oh, as no okay. one left the warp core open... Things should be okay. So, like, at this point, we don't have to worry about, like, the vines corrupting, like, any of the c controls around the warp core that would initiate, you know, a self-destruct. No. That's no. what I was concerned about. Yeah. They've, they've <laughs> broken some wires, which is why the, um... Gotcha. But it's not... I impending mean... death. Maybe. <laughs> you don't know. You're not a engineer, but eh, probably not. My question is, did they know this was going on? And that's just the rest of them from this ship over there? I mean, what's going on? <laughs> there doesn't seem to be anybody else here. Are those 16 it? Uh, that's part of what we're here to find out. I do not have the answer yet. Maybe it might be prudent to find a shuttle and get geared up to better handle what's going on here. That at least let the captain know so he can make the decision. I mean, because they're running loose on our ship and they don't know that they're compromised. I mean, we're compromised, but I don't know. If those I'm things are keyed here. Yeah, if those things are growing in consoles and stuff, I don't want to get on that transporter pad. Yeah. I didn't want to no. before, but I definitely don't want to now. Um, and if the situation is, you know, progressing, I'd rather get to a shuttle sooner than later before it gets overtaken by whatever this stuff is. Okay. So I would like to continue checking rooms on the way. Okay. But we can head towards wherever a shuttle might be. Yes, so you're going to head towards the shuttle bay. Mm -hmm. All right, as you check rooms through, you're just sort of poking your head in. Uh, closer to the shuttle bay are the barracks. So okay. these are the crew quarters. Anybody there? Uh, the rooms are mostly locked. Any response to Nox? Nope. You want to force one of the doors open to see what's going on with the crew? Yes. All right, so uh, that would... Are you trying to force it open physically, which would be a uh, fitness security? Or are you trying to hack it open, which would be a reason engineering role? Right. Rajan has pretty good fitness security. I have a way better chance of busting the door down than yeah, I Yeah, yeah, I think we're gonna bust it down. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I can I can help with that if that gives more dice to the yeah. pool. Um, I mean. There, 
uh, with the way the doors are, it's only going to be two people. Okay. Because essentially there's going to be one person on one side, one person on the other, and you're going to get your hands in and sort of try to pull. <laughs> right. All right. Cool. Because by locked, I just mean that it doesn't automatically open when you come up to it. Yeah. All right. All right. We're well, we doing fitness and security? Yep, yeah. so who is taking the lead and who is rolling? Because whoever's assisting only gets one die. Uh, what's your fitness security, Halana? 13. Okay, so you can take the lead, because mine's... Well, no, mine's 14, so I have a little bit I was going to say, better. yours is probably better. Yeah, so mine's a little bit better, so I'll take the lead. All right. I'll cheer. <laughs> Sweet! Two successes. I unfortunately did not aid. Oh, yeah, but two successes is enough. Yeah, you guys pry the door open. But you did not complicate, so that's good. Yes. That is good, yes. <laughs> uh, go ahead and roll me a, an actual d6. I don't have one of those, so someone else do that. <laughs> uh, I have one oh, right here. Oh, you should actually have one in the tray that I gave you, Amber. Oh, There's I do. Hoosier, yeah. <laughs> but whoever wants to roll, it can go for it. All right, go ahead. I saw other two rolling, yeah. so whatever you got, Sean. Uh, I got a one. You got a one? This is the captain's quarters. Ooh. Because I'm assuming you guys sort of went to the first door that said, you know, you saw the thing, the sign saying crew quarters, and this went yeah. up to the first door. Mm. So yeah, this the is Captain Achilles Trice. Still, is she still on the Serenitis? Yes. As far as we know, she was still on the Serenitis. Yeah. If that was the captain at all. Dun dun dun. Mm. Dun dun dun. It, it, uh, it was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, does she keep written logs too, or just audio? Um, you are going to poke around? Yeah. I will say it's, oh, yeah. it's fairly simple. Uh, there is a written journal on her desk. Cool. Can I page through that real quick and see if it has any anything to, for us to go on here? Uh, does anyone here know if the Universal Translators translate written language? No, I think it's audio. I think only. they're purely audio auditory. They, no, they they they're pretty much auditory. So you and, flip through, and there's there's a lot of Betazoid written. Great. You know, um, I will say that uh, you notice dates. Okay. Because uh, we'll say everyone uses Arabic numbers, just because humans have taken over the Federation and enforced Arabic numbers. That sounds like something we would do. Yes. So uh, you notice that the star dates are set up, and about a week within the mission on this planet, the uh, entries stop on the journal. Okay. I'm gonna take this with us for somebody who knows this language to look at. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming no one would have a good reason to know Betazoid. I, mean, I mean, I know there's not a language role or a language skill, but <laughs> if someone not... in their background, like, well, my mentor at the Academy was a Betazoid. <laughs> I might know some Betazoid medical terms, but I don't think it'd be enough to read her journal. Yeah. Especially because she wouldn't be writing in medical terms. Maybe scientific terms, we could... but... I think if anyone, it would be Zeke, because ambassador, counselor, if anyone would have that sort of skill. Yeah. I mean, if you want, uh, roll a d6. Cho uh, before you roll, choose an... Oh, but... I have chosen I a, a number. <laughs> I got a one. One? Uh, sorry, the number was five. So, yeah, you don't... You may understand some phrases... Um, like, uh, the word bathroom comes up at one point in the journal, and you're like, I know how to ask to go to the bathroom in Betazoid. <laughs> yeah, there we go. But, um, yeah, it's... So, yeah, this is... You're in the captain's quarters, but there's not a whole lot to be found here. There I will say that the, uh, vineage does look a bit denser. I was, I was gonna ask what the foliage looked like in here. Yeah. Is the pink haze concentrated here more so than anywhere else? Uh, no, it's still pretty... Consistently weird? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, the Star, uh, Starfleet ships have amazing airflow, is all I'll say. <laughs> Circulation incredible. Nice. But makes it very difficult to tell where something might be coming from. Yes. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, Do we want to try another room to see if we can find one of the crew members that's still supposed to be here, or should we just get on the shuttle if we can find it? I really want to find somebody if we can. But I know you guys also really want to be gone, and I no. It. Honestly, this if is... I can, if we can find a crew member and ascertain if they're safe or not, that would make me feel a lot better because I'm not going to leave someone behind that we could potentially save. All right, so yeah, I would like to try to bust down another door. Maybe I won't help with this one. Okay. Are you guys basically going to go door to door? Yes. Sort of? Yes. Okay. Uh, no need to keep rolling for them. We'll just say that you guys. Because, well, basically, what's going to happen is you roll. If you fail, you try again. Yeah. If you succeed, you keep going. There's no real failure state. And I'm a firm believer if there's no failure state for a roll, we don't roll. Until we run out of doors. But yeah, yeah. No, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, basically, there are six doors in this hallway. And uh, you go through them. You find um, uh, Vakor is the next door, the Vulcan man, the Vulcan first officer. Then um, uh, Topol is there as well, the uh, Napian medical officer. You find two more that you've not met before, and eventually on the last of the six, you find... Um, you Who is opening the door on this one? Probably Rosrin is going to be opening the doors. Okay, Rosrin, is anyone helping you, or are you just... I'll, I'll assist if Halata doesn't want to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I will have each of you roll a d6. Four. Four. Okay, uh, Rosrin, as you pull open the door... Ah, oh, great. Uh, you are shot with a phaser. What in the... <laughs> Sean put you up to this. Get me back for... <laughs> <laughs> um, you get to roll two dice because your um, uniform gives you one dice and the protective gear you're wearing gives you another All Right, dice. so I roll two d20s or d6s? Uh, two d6s. Two d6s, got it. Ooh. Oof. What am I looking for here? I got a one and a two. A one and a two? Okay, so you are going to ignore three of the seven stress coming your way. Uh, oh, there you, you take are. a solid phaser rifle blast to the chest. Ooh. You are still a, You didn't take five stress, so you have not accrued a wound, but you are... You're feeling it. Uh. And you hear someone start to scream as, you know, get back, get back. Hollering firing a couple more times, but I'm sure you guys duck to the sides. Yeah, and I'm gonna start, you know, hollering in my best command voice, cease fire, we're here on a we're here to help. Make me a control plus command. This is gonna be a difficulty of two, because, well, you'll find out why it's gonna be a difficulty of two. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the surprise. You okay. already know that the captain is the real captain. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Composure, diplomacy, apply. Uh, com composure. Okay, so I got two successes. Excellent. He 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 hello? Who, who is Hi. that? This is Commander Halata from the USS Serenitis. Who are you? The Serenitis. Yes. God, we're, we're saved. Uh, the, this is L L Lieutenant Commander Roscoe. Roscoe? Lieutenant Commander Jonathan Roscoe of the Nebula. Nalumbo. I have forgotten the name of my own ship. <laughs> it's been stressful. It's and he, he kind of points, and it's like a full-blown phaser rifle. And you yeah. can tell it's been modified. This is not a stock standard phaser rifle. Roscoe, are you the last one aboard? The... I... The... I'm, I'm the last one that's still me. Okay, well... Come with us and start telling me what's going on, and we will get you over to the Serenitis and get everybody here in quarantine, because something weird is definitely going
going on here? He kind of like is, sw- you know, moving the gun around, but or the phaser, but hey, he. Why are you pointing that thing? I, I once uh. once Halada started talking to Roscoe. I'm yeah. over with over with uh, Rosrin treating him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. You can like do a scan. There's no uh, Rosrin didn't get a he didn't get a wound. So it's just some uh, okay. stress. Also, um, also scanned the symbiote to make sure that the symbiote yeah. is okay. Yeah, it was just like a a solid horse kick to the chest, which I can tell you from experience, very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Roger's um, not happy. <laughs> so yeah, uh, if you want, you can roll a um, I think it's control medicine to heal. Huh. Uh, that is one success. One success, so I believe it is, uh, every success is two stress. Cool. So, All yeah. Right. You're bad. down to two stress. That's better. You'll be yeah. fine. It's just, it's just a phaser burn. We get them right, all the so, time. Um, it, well, it's not even a burn because it was set on stun. Yeah. Oh, was it on stun? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> the way, the way it reacted, I thought it was definitely on kill. <laughs> hey, it was a hard hit. But yeah, you you can, if looking at this thing, it you see like the duct tape and wires jammed into it. He has been mad tinkering hidden in his room for you don't know how long. You can ask him how long if you'd like, though. Yes, I am going to just start like not rapid firing questions because this man is obviously under stress. But mm-hmm. what happened? Um. Uh, Start at the beginning, take it slow, it's fine, yeah. and as as we're doing this, walk towards getting off the ship. Yeah. Uh, so. The story he gives is essentially that um, things were going well, planet side, until um, these creatures, uh, he calls them fairies, which I'm not sure any of you guys know what those are. Uh, he calls them fairies, apparently it's an ancient Earth um Myth. Oh, actually, no. Uh, Zeke, you'd know. You're human. I am human, but I grew up on a frontier colony. Yeah. So. You, you're probably <laughs> vaguely familiar with, like, Peter Pan or... Sure, yeah. And um, basically, they would... Um, they started biting the crewmen, and slowly they took over. Like the other crew the people head. brought them aboard along with samples. Over how? Uh, they brought them up on shuttles. So they just, like, started unduly influencing them? Or yeah. straight up controlling? He is not sure. Okay. All he knows is that, um, what, that the only other human aboard got confined to quarters. On, like, day four of the mission. And then, um, basically, Roscoe was strong-armed into following the orders. So, Hmm. the other human, are you talking about Ensign Jace? Yes, yes. He's over on the Serenitis right now. Is is he safe? We, We believe so, but we're going to go back and make sure. All right, I am going to spend uh, uh, four threat now. Jeez. And he jumps up and shoots something behind you. Mm. Okay. As uh, you... I will... Go ahead. I'm assuming you all spin around. Yeah. 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 Uh, he is firing wildly as one of these uh, things is flying at you. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I would like to have drawn my phaser while I spun around because, yeah. you know, yeah. I've been yeah. in combat before. <laughs> you did that. all about that life. <laughs> you, did the, uh, you did the thing that the guy did in Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly that do, cool. And had to do the spin before he shot the gun. Yes. Yeah. All right, uh, we are in combat. Who would like to take the first shot? Uh, uh, I think that should be Rosrin. Rajan has specialty in hand phasers. And I'd like right. to use a momentum too if I can. 
All right. So Did make me a guys? yeah a control security roll. Sweet. Come on, I need good rolls. This needs to be a good one. Sweet. Three successes. No crits or anything, but three successes. All right. So that is it is two successes to hit. So um, your bonus success adds a damage. Sweet. And uh, so go ahead and roll the amount of d6s that it says on your character sheet under the phaser. All right. One, two, three, four, five. And, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So I know... What ones are twos or twos, right? Ones are ones, twos are twos, and then fives and sixes for hand phasers, I believe, are also twos. All right, so two, four, six. Okay, a six plus one from your bonus success, so seven. So seven. All right, you ping this thing dead on. You, uh, weirdly enough, um, and this is actually true, I rolled ridiculously well for Roscoe shooting you. I rolled three dice and rolled two ones and a three. Oh, wow. He is a terrible shot. But he's, you know, just sort of peppering, trying to keep it at bay. You spin around and you just bullseye this thing and it falls to the floor. Sweet. Is it completely unconscious or just stunned? Uh, Honestly, you do not think this thing is alive. Okay. I know... I know the phaser was set to stun, but as you look closer, this thing almost looks like a praying mantis. It is very fragile looking. Ah. Um. Did did you bring anything that we could uh, carry this back in as a, as this properly to study and have it still be quarantined? Uh. Looking at the doctor. No, Commander, because we weren't expecting this entire ship to be a biosphere. That makes perfect sense. Just didn't know if it was a happenstance mm. thing. <laughs> um, yeah, no. uh, but you can scan it if you'd like. You do have your hand scanner. Yeah, I mean, we'll, I'll give it a scan. Yeah. So yeah, you can get some biological information for it. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to make you roll because you're using a tricorder to scan, a medical tricorder to scan something medically, so this is literally its purpose. <laughs> it's not running around or moving, so yeah, you can scan it. So you've got some biological data on it. Okay, I've, I've got the biological data on it, Commander. Mm-hmm. So I mean, um, if you want to roll a reason plus medical, you can um, extract some information from it. It'll be a difficulty one, but you know, I'm going to give you a little information for one, and each success you can spend for more information, right? Or um, add to momentum. It's one success. One success. Okay, this thing is, um, this thing is empathic in nature. It seems to feed off of some part of emotion, thought, something like that. Hmm. We do have other momentum if you'd like to spend it for bonus information. We have five momentum currently. Are we all good for that? Yeah, I say do so, yeah. Okay, yeah, we'll spend the momentum to get more info. Okay, uh, how many are you spending, and do you have specific questions you'd like to ask? Uh, I think, do we want to spend more? I mean, I don't want to waste all of our momentum I now. I think, if you, how many questions do you, how many specific questions do you have? I've, I've got one that I can share with us if, if we want to use it or not. Um, I just wanted to ascertain if it the effect it has on those with psychic ability versus non-psychic creatures. I mean, can okay. you tell that yet or not? I mean, otherwise... Uh, okay. So I, I think spend two, one for your question and one for anything else okay. he feels like sharing. Right. I'm good with that. Sure. All right. Um, you are, as you look at the data, the... The effect that it has, you do believe that it could use its empathic abilities to control people that have op- psychically opened minds. 
Um, and I will say for the other, for the generic one, these things are non-sapient. They are insects. Uh, they okay. have... Hmm? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I just... Oh, they, they, they aren't, like, thinking creatures. They're not, a new, a, like, a new intelligent right. species. Yeah. They are acting purely on uh, instinct. So we shouldn't feel bad for smacking them. <laughs> so no no big plot, no big plan. They just found a good food source and wanted to go with it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think because yeah. it's a bunch of betazoids and Vulcans. Commander, I mean, we can continue to search the ship, but I think we need to get back to the Serenitis now and take care of yeah. a possible infestation there. Uh, absolutely agree. Yeah. Booking it to the shuttle. Yep. All right. Uh, yeah, the shuttle is at the end of this hallway. So you guys uh, reach it, and as you open the door, you notice that the shuttles are wrapped up in roots. Of course yeah. they are. And the, sitting in the center of the shuttle bay, the largest room in the ship, is a large tree. The leaves of this tree look like lotus blossoms. In the sort of roots and trunk of the tree, you notice a Betazoid, uh, a Betazoid woman and a Halanian woman. And along the outside of the room, you notice sort of in like pod-like wrappings to be more members of the crew. Oh my goodness. Mm. Okay, um, Dr. Haskins, see if you can safely extract people from those pods. Um, and then the rest of us need to work on clearing a shuttle to get out of here. Uh, yeah, right. I can do that. Um, you know, Lieutenant Commander Cooper, uh, I'd like to schedule an appointment for counseling after we get back to the ship, because this is not what this I... This nightmare feels enough sleep. for all of you to come and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> Commander, I, you know, also went to medical school, you know, for my counseling. I can uh, assist Dr. Haskins. Yes, please. Yeah, and I'll help you with the vines. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so as uh, Keed and Zeke approach the tree. Oh, no. Dice roll. Um, you are both attacked by these insects. The, um... I um, in my notes they are called the Lotus Eaters, and they swoop down and attack you both, and you both get hit. So you can go ahead and roll your resistance dice. Okay, so we're getting two, two dice apiece. Ooh, a two to six. All right. So you'll reduce it by three. Okay. Roll the. Five and six. Five and a six, you'll reduce it by two, and it is four damage. Four stress. Okay, so I take four, one stress then. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so, um, yeah, Halada and Razrin, you notice that they're coming, like, they are swarming. Hi. Um, target practice I... for Razrin just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can trying I, to cover a lot of. <laughs> can I think of a good w way to, like, not have to take them out one at a time? Um, what we are going to do here, if everyone is up for it, is we are going to do a shooting gallery. <laughs> what we are going to do is um, Zeke and Keed are going to roll. Um, uh, we're going to say daring plus so uh, med medicine and then Halada and Rosrin are going to roll control and um, control well before you guys roll let me finish explaining the rules of the game control <laughs> sorry, sorry. it's alright control security between okay. the four of you we need um, we'll say between the four of you we need six successes does my hand phasers count for criticals? Yep. Sweet. Okay. So, uh, Rosrin, why don't you buy an extra die? Okay. 
Uh, uh, let's see. We have. We currently have three momentum. Okay. And one of the doctors should buy an extra die too. I mean, yeah. I was okay. I'm ro rolling medicine and daring. Yes, because you are yeah. running in trying to figure out how to remove these people. So that's uh, that's a fifteen for me. So I don't know if you need. Yeah, you should buy it because you'll get more successes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All set. Yep. Sweet. I got two. I will, I will take one, two, three, and four. Three, two, six, seven, four, six, seven with uh, Zeke. Do it. Can I apply my focus of emergency medicine yes, or this biology? Is, this is definitely both okay. of those things. So that's <laughs> I have emergency medicine. I did crit them. Excellent. So I got a five, which is my medicine, so that's a crit, and then I got a four, which that's a crit, and then I got a 16, so that's four successes. Okay, awesome. so you guys have blown this out of the water. <laughs> so the two of you are, like, administering hyposprays. Um, Keed, you are yelling orders to Zeke while you're taking your Klingon house knife, chopping at the, chopping at the things around these people, pulling them out. Um, and then, yeah, uh, Zeke, you are administering hyposprays and monitoring life with your, um, you're, you're two-fisting. You've got a hypospray in one hand and your tricorder in the other. Then, uh, Rosrin and Halada, you are basically both pinned up. I'm going to say Charlie's Angels pose, because why not? <laughs> sure. Because you guys have blown this out of the water pinging them repeatedly and as you finish up um, you pull the two people out of the tree, the Betazoid and the Halanin, and as you pull them out, the lotus tree slowly starts to wilt and the branches start to kind of fall around you. Um, mm -hmm. Roscoe, while you're doing all of this, ran up to a ship and started blasting, uh, uh shuttle, and just started opening fire with his modified <laughs> nice. phaser. Uh, the, the way he modified this is it deals maximum stun damage, but only stun damage, so it doesn't damage, like, bulkheads, because he's, and it, he's the chief engineer. Sure. He wants to kill living things, not his ship. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, you guys uh, managed to destroy the tree by both removing its food source, which are these, um, the crewmen, the two crewmen, and you have successfully saved the Nalum Nalumbo. Nice. So yeah, you guys have succeeded in your mission. You have what? defeated the uh, fairy praying mantis creatures, the lotus eaters. And destroyed the tr hypnotic tree. Now to make awesome. appointments with Zeke for counseling because yeah. this was nightmare fuel. <laughs> yeah. um, you guys do some, as you are doing scans in the aftermath, you realize that everyone on your ship is safe. These, uh, the lotus eaters cannot exist without the spores from the trees. Ah. So the okay, pink so mist is to keep them alive, not necessarily yeah. to mess with our heads. Yep. Okay. So then the, yeah. the the ones that were on our ship then were just basically high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they still had the leftover psychotropic effect from the bites from the Lotus Eaters. Yeah. And we're probably trying to get us to go on the ship so that we could figure out what was going on and fix it. Oh, no, no. They were trying to get you on the ship to get you on the Lotus Eater side because yeah. they, that. they breathe the spores, but they need more food. Mm -hmm. They just didn't realize that they can't feed on non-psychic entities. Mm. That makes sense. So is there I didn't know how I far out of it they'd gotten. Oh, so. sorry. All right. So, yeah, that will wrap us up. Awesome. Um, don't forget. Uh, we're really happy that you joined us. Hope you had a great time. I had an amazing time running this. Um, thank you, chat, for all of the momentum. Yes, and thank you. Yeah, we needed that. We needed that for sure. Yeah. I just re hmm? I was just going to say, Rajan's reports are going to be. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to run something on the one of the weirdest chapters of the Odyssey. 
<laughs> uh, so, yep, yeah, uh, we hope you'll join us for our shows coming up. Just a reminder, tomorrow, uh, the lovely Danny here is going to be running 7C Leaps and Bounties at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. I think Pacific, because Central is a lot closer to us than that. Yes. And then on Saturday, it's seriously Let's Play Overlight by Renegade Studios at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 p.m. Pacific. Sunday, the Illuminated Page Murder on the Orient Express at 5 p.m. Eastern, uh, 2 p.m. Pacific. And that's run by Roxy, who is our intrepid pilot aboard the uh, Serenitis. And then coming up next Monday, Matt slash Tox Garahar is going to run us through the Judgment Enforced. And um, again, if you are enjoying us, follow on our channel here so you can keep up to date. If you are really enjoying it, we would really appreciate the subscriptions. They uh, Not only do they help us as a channel, but it's a real morale booster. Let us know that people are out there and they love what we do and they really want to support what we're doing. Uh, so it's a bit of an ego boost, I'm not going to lie. Um, we also have, you can follow Rick on Rasp. We're on all social medias, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we have our YouTube channel where we upload episodes. So if you miss something, or if you really like this and decide you want to tune in on Leaps and Bounties, but you've missed an episode, you can go watch it on YouTube. So you can catch up with us. Um, we have a Discord, which I'm assuming the instructions to join that are popping up in chat. If not right now, then shortly thereafter. I'm finished saying this. And so, yeah, um, we had a great time. Hope you did, too. And we will see you next time. So y'all have a good night. Bye, guys. Bye. And we are currently going to be raiding the dragons and things that work as we pass, at, pass here. So if you want to go ahead and do that with us, let them know we sent you. Um, we just love to keep the spirit going around and just the positivity and the love. Read! Right. <laughs> <laughs> Applaud and all that. Applaud! Y'all yeah. right. yeah, have a good night. Good night. Bye.